Sina Tony, did think a cook and nandy. Ha zo ha, must see nets in home. Goja, cook or conic a ha zo ha, what art and da. O oh God, may your spirit and guidance be in us as we work for the benefit of all of our people, for peace and justice in our land, and for the constant recognition of dignity and aspirations of those whom we serve. Amen. Mon Dieu, que ton esprit nous accompagne et nous guide dans notre travail pour le bien de tous, pour la paix et la justice sur notre territoire, et pour la reconnaissance constante de la dignité et des aspirations de ceux que nous servons. Amen. Please be seated. Mr. Clerk, would you please find out if the Commissioner of the Northwest Territories, the Honorable Margaret Tom, is prepared to enter the to enter to open the 16th Youth Parliament. Masi ejo ajo apiti tene konya ke kuti evalanta kuto asi shon kuda une masi. Thank you, young people, for having been here this week. Involved in what I'm sure was a lot of interesting work and that I hope that you've learned a lot this week. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Makeway, Madam Premier Downs, 
youth parliamentarians, ladies and gentlemen, visitors in the gallery. My name is Margaret Tom, and I'm the Commissioner of the Northwest Territories. I am honored and privileged to be invited here today to bring you my greetings and open the 16th Youth Parliament, an educational outreach program hosted by the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly. Let me be the first to congratulate each and every one of you for being selected to take part in this ed educational outreach program, representing your community, your school, your family. You should know that it is a great honor to be asked to speak in this chamber, which is dedicated to work on behalf of all residents of the Northwest Territories. You are all bright, talented students from across the Northwest Territories, and you should all be very proud to be part of this youth parliament. You are here, perhaps, as future leaders to learn about consensus government and our legislative assembly, its history, and its important work for the people of the Northwest Territories. We are very fortunate to have you all here in the Legislative Assembly this week, and we appreciate the effort you have devoted and prepared for your youth parliament experience. As a woman leader, I am especially pleased to see so many young women here as youth parliamentarians. The NWT needs more women in leadership roles, and I hope some of you will pursue elected office later in life to serve the people of our territory in your respective constituents. I am hopeful that the numbers of female politicians in this House and in our municipal councils will increase in the future. We can change the world, and I firmly believe that we can, we are, and we will. Public service can be exciting and rewarding, but it can also be demanding and challenging. The tight schedule of activities you participated in this week has probably given you some insight into the pace of work that the MLAs must keep once they are elected to office. It is a challenging life, but making a real difference for the people of our territory is a huge reward in itself. The desire to serve people well and faithfully should motivate you if you are drawn to politics. I am a proud northerner, and I look around the chamber. I feel so proud to see such an eager, polished, and accomplished group of youth parliamentarians. Each of you bring a unique and valuable perspective to the issues you will debate in the House today. I look forward to hearing that debate. I know you all have worked very hard to prepare for this event, and you have been researching, writing, and formulating your opinions on issues important to you, your communities, and to all Northerners. I know that you have put a great deal of thought and effort into getting ready for this afternoon. I can feel excitement and anticipation in the chamber. These are very important ingredients for a lively and, I hope, productive debate. It is an honor for all of us to take part in the Legislative Assembly's Youth Parliament Educational Outreach Program. 
It gives me great pleasure as a commissioner of the Northwest Territories to declare the 2018 Youth Parliament officially open. Thank you, Masicho Kwanani Kwana Mercipuku. Thank you, Commissioner Tom, for opening the 16th Youth Parliament. Good afternoon, colleagues. Welcome and congratu congratulations to you all, Parliament's participation for your presence and your contribution contribution for this week's educational experience during this week schools I mean, students receive the privilege of interacting with our own members of the legislative assembly who serve our communities and it gives uh, us students an opportunity to share with them issues that are important to us as young people. Youth, par youth Parliament is an important event because it gives grade 9 and 10 students in the North an opportunity to learn more about our consensus style government. I would like to thank the legisl Legislative Assembly for providing us the opportunity to come here and find what is it like to be a member of the Legislative Assembly. I think it's important for youth around the NWT to meet and come together as a group to talk about issues that are happening in our communities. Some of these issues we may or may not have in common. I'm looking forward to be given the chance to offer our opinions on matters that directly affect us. Being part of the youth parliament will also help our government understand many issues youth are facing today. All too often, our voices are not heard. This week, we will have learned how our government makes decisions that affect everyone in the Northwest Territories. Youth Parliament is a great opportunity for students to meet youth all across the NWT and to make new friends. I appreciate the opportunity to experience Youth Parliament 2018 and I am proud to represent my MLA of Monfui and the Honorable Speaker Jackson Lafferty. Colleagues, I wish you the best as you deliver in the house today. Masi Cho. Minister statements, minister statements. I would like to remind members that are I would like to remind members that this is an opportunity for members to make an announcement or statement on our government, our government policy.
Honorable Premier. Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this government finds that there is a significant difficulty in attracting doctors to the North, therefore creating a shortage of medical professionals. As the Minister of Health and Social Services can agree, in several of the less populated areas of the Northwest Territories, many places do not have a full-time doctor, thus making medical and specialized health very challenging. Scholarships will help encourage students to take an interest in a healthcare profession by helping to fund their secondary schooling. We propose that every year, one deserving student receives a full scholarship into medical school, and two students will receive partial scholarships into nursing and medical programs. This will help train Northerners to work across the NWT and help our residents. Advertising in the South and right here in the North will allow the population to know about the current events of not having enough nurses, doctors, and specialists in the less populated areas of the North. In elementary schools, high schools, colleges, and universities, many people will see the advertisement and think about the opportunities they have. Even a poster in the grocery store can spark someone's interest in becoming a medical professional to help people. When advertising that many of the communities in the Northwest Territories do not have a full-time doctor or nurse, individuals may see it as a great opportunity to live and travel around the North. They will help the groups of people that do not necessarily get the aid and support that they need due to not having a full-time medical professional. This will move us closer to our goal of a healthy, vib vibrant North. To achieve our goal of more doctors, nurses, and specialists being hired to work not only in the greater populations, but in the less populated areas, we are currently working with the federal government to create scholarships for training our northern residents. We are also working with educational institutions to guarantee spots for northern medical students. Upon completion, we will provide priority hiring for students and for those who choose to either live or travel back and forth between the small communities, will receive a bonus at the end of each year as an incentive. As a measure of encouragement, every two to three years, the doctors, nurses, and specialists will get, will get together in their respective groups and decide on one new piece of technology or machinery to purchase as a way of improving the quality of care that patients receive. By having more nurses, doctors, physical therapists, and specialists, better health care will be provided to the residents of every community. The solution to the shortage is simple. Promote the programs, give full and partial scholarships, and increase the yearly budget to allow clinics and hospitals to be supplied with more equipment and better quality programs and services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Masi. Honorable Minister of Environmental and Natural, Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Drin Gwinzi Shuri Brianna Lenny Vaji. Mr. Speaker, we recognize that a major issue that the NWT faces is the lack of caribou. Communities all across the North depend on harvesting caribou to provide food on the table and to feed their families. The caribou population has gone down by thousands throughout the past decade. A lot of hunters do not fill out the surveys that are provided by ENR. We have a solution to this problem. We are looking at providing some form of reward for filling out the survey to encourage hunters to be more open to filling them out. We could use gift cards for local grocery stores. We have worked with the local grocery stores for their cooperation and donation to fund these rewards. The herds have, lost, the herds have also lost their sense of direction because some hunters aren't letting the leading caribou pass. We know that it is an important key to let the leaders of the herd pass before hunting the caribou. The lack of caribou has left some families wondering when or if the herd is coming back. Also, a public awareness campaign to inform people that letting the leading caribou pass is very crucial to herd migration. The importance of caribou is one of the biggest priorities in communities all across the territory. It is one of the most essential animals to the traditions of the Aboriginal people in the NWT. We believe these solutions would begin to address this huge problem and to spread information about how important it is to the people of the NWT to follow these management approaches so that we have caribou for the future generations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Masi. Minister of Health and Social Service. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Mr. Speaker, the federal government has announced it will be legalizing cannabis during the summer of 2018, and the provinces and territories will be able to regulate the sale. The Department of Health and Social Services is working diligently to meet the deadline established for legalization in the Northwest Territories. With the introduction of the legislation to legalize cannabis in the NWT, the Department of Health and Social Services has a responsibility to ensure public health and safety. The government has made a commitment to the public to ensure that policies are in place to regulate the sale and distribution of cannabis once it becomes legal. Today, I would like to focus on the department's efforts to reduce the risks for our youth. The government has identified that the use of cannabis during adolescence can cause functional and structural changes to the developing brain, leading to impaired neurological development and cognitive decline, as well as the decline of comprehension skills. Adolescents who regularly use cannabis are at an elevated risk for cognitive decline, poor educational achievement, mental illness in adulthood, and injury and death caused by cannabis-impaired driving. The Department of Infrastructure is establishing punishment for adults and youth who are driving impaired under the effects of cannabis. The government will plan to create effective advertising campaigns and broadcast them over a variety of media to ensure that the message of these dangers is widely publicized. Regulating the sale of cannabis will be our top priority when considering the upcoming legislation. We will therefore be looking into ways to limit access to cannabis. This will include ensuring no sales be made to minors, no advertising in areas where minors are present, and having controlled access to the products in areas where youth are present. The government will also ensure that the public is fully conscious that it is a criminal offense to sell cannabis to youth or to use youth to purchase cannabis for an adult. We are dedicated to educating our youth on the dangers of early use of cannabis. We plan to implement a health unit taught by nurses and nursing students to instruct elementary, junior high, and high school students about the dangers of cannabis consumption for adults as well as for children. We also appreciate that some of the smaller communities have a harder time providing education on health-related topics because they may not have the proper resources, which is why we are forming a committee to travel to the smaller communities and inform adolescents on the detrimental effects of misusing cannabis. These programs will provide ongoing education for many years to come. The Don't Be a Butthead campaign was launched in 2005 and was wildly successful, which is why the Department of Health and Social Services is going to look into creating a similar campaign to teach minors about the dangerous effects of cannabis on the developing brain. We are committed as well to consulting with the youth of the NWT to further understand what they would like to learn and how they can make safer, healthier decisions. We believe that the involvement of the youth in issues regarding youth is crucial to ensuring that their voices are heard by the government. These new rules will allow adults 19 and older to possess fresh or edible cannabis products, as well as have up to four plants in their home. The government is concerned that parents must also be educated to ensure that the dangers of leaving substances or plants accessible to children may cause permanent damage to children, as I noted in the risks I mentioned previously. Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to ensuring that the legislation of cannabis in the NWT is thoroughly controlled and will be a positive change for our territory. We are optimistic that the adolescents in our communities will be able to learn about cannabis in a safe environment, which will lead them to making smart choices in their futures. The steps and regulations that the Department of Health and Social Services have outlined are some of the ways that we are working to ensure that the youth of the NWT are protected. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Basi, Minister of and okay. Minister of Industry, Tur Tourist and Investment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The mining industries are extremely important for the economy of the Northwest Territories. They provide hundreds of jobs to feed families across the North. Mining plays a key role on how we live today and how the North grew to become what we see in front of us. At this moment, the Northwest Territories is mining gold, diamonds, silver, and other various rare earth metals. Projects like the Mining Incentive Program help to reduce the risks associated with grassroots mineral exploration. Exploration, which is vital to the sustainable and productive mining industry. We must continue to support and introduce new concepts and ideas to better the mining industry and in turn improve northern living and lifestyle. 
Les industries minières sont extrêmement importantes pour l'économie des territoires du Nord-Ouest. Ils fournissent des centaines d'emplois pour nourrir les familles du Nord. L'industrie minière joue un rôle clé dans la façon dont nous vivons aujourd'hui et comment le Nord a grandi pour devenir ce que nous voyons en face de nous. À l'heure actuelle, les territoires du Nord-Ouest extraient de l'or, des diamants, de l'argent et d'autres métaux rares. Des projets comme le Mining Incentive Program contribuent à réduire les risques associés à l'exploration minérale et à la base, une exploration essentielle à une industrie minière durable et productive. Nous devons continuer de soutenir et d'introduire de nouveaux concepts et de nouvelles idées pour améliorer l'industrie minière et améliorer ainsi la vie et le style des, des vies dans le Nord. Mr. Speaker, currently the Department of Industry, Tourism and Investment has been working towards the construction of the Slave Geological Province Access Corridor. This project would connect the Slave Geological Province and its vast mineral deposits in the south to ev and eventually to deep water ports in Nunavut. This all-weather road would reduce the operating costs of mines and facilitate resource exploration and development activities. An all-access road would permit the development of the Tulsan Hydro Expansion Project and the Transmission Line Project. In addition, it would provide us with the opportunity to exploit precious metals required for low-carbon production. This project, along with the Tlicho All-Season Road, would not only provide our residents with access to resources not provided by their communities, but also meets the needs of the mining industry by not having to fly in their workers and supplies. While understanding that mi mining is vital for our future of the North, on the contrary, we must also invest in economic diversity. Funding projects for small-scale food programs in agriculture and human resources, agriculture, an entirely new industry in the North. Not long ago, we had no farms across the North, but with government funding, we were able to produce the Northern Farm Training Institute, or NIFTI which specializes in farming in the north. Based in Hayrifer, Nifty is just one success story of us investing in economic diversity. Providing support for traditional economy and arts introduces a whole new market for Aboriginal arts. Showcasing art made in the territories creates an interest for our art across the nation and potential international buyers. We must also invest in our hydroelectric projects. Similar to the Tulsan Energy hydroelectric expansion in project, which would create construction and engineering jobs in the north, we could also consider constructing a hydroelectric dam further north in order to provide more reliable and greener energy for our northern communities still using diesel-generated electricity. We could also invest in a fisheries plant in Hay River. In conclusion, in order to further our mining industry, which is vital to the north's future, we must invest in building new roads like the Slave Geological Province Access Corridor. The department understands that mining is crucial for our future, but we must continue to invest in economic diversity so that our future does not depend solely on mining. Economic diversity is essential for the future of the Northwest Territories. In order to grow as a territory, the department will be investing our time and resources into growing smaller industries in the North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Masi, Minister of Education, Culture, Employ and Employment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, for many years, teachers in the schools across the Northwest Territories have had an excessive workload to deal with. If teachers cannot do their job without having to put in too much extra effort and overtime hours, that can impact the learning students are getting. This has been an issue spoken about in the past few years. Another factor to contribute to the overwhelming work was the extra 100 hours that the NWT had for school compared to the other provinces. Starting the beginning of the 2017-2018 school year, this issue was addressed and the school hours were reduced to 945 from 1,045. However, more work is required to completely solve this issue. The major problem is not entirely the excessive amount of school hours the NWT had, but the lack of teachers, which is forcing the existing ones to work way too hard. This has had a dramatic effect on the students because teachers cannot always meet their learning needs and sometimes they cannot manage certain things into their schedule because they would not cooperate with one of their other classes. 
Mr. Speaker, in the coming year, we have found a, sh a short-term solution to this issue, and that is to hire more teachers to level the workload for all teachers. This will allow students to get the learning they need because teachers would finally be able to work extra time into their schedule. Mr. Speaker, another challenge for teachers is the lack of training in specific languages. Across the territory, there are 11 official languages. The majority of teachers instruct their courses in English, which is only one of the 11 official languages in the Northwest Territories. Many people are interested in the Fra French language, but it is not as commonly present. Often, teachers who are capable of teaching French are forced to teach all the French and English classes. Teachers who are capable of speaking full Francophone often are forced to teach an incredible amount of students so they get a better education, but they, however, would benefit more if they could just hire more teachers. Our plan is to create a review committee that is arm's length away from the government and school boards who reviews the daily lesson plans for each class and school to observe and identify parts of the curriculum that are not benefiting student learning and what is an effective use of teacher time. By doing this review, the committee can identify things that are taking up an excessive amount of teacher time and not proving to have successful outcomes. The next step for this committee would be to write a report back to Cabinet for further review and so they can make the decision on what to do next. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Musi. Minister, Minister of Lands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, since devolution in 2014, the Northwest Territories has had under its jurisdiction two acts concerning the management of public lands, the Commissioner's Land Act and the Northwest Territories Land Act. The Commissioner's Lands Act was created by the Government of the Northwest Territories to control streets, roads, lanes, and paths on public land, as well as lands around municipalities. The rest of our public land, as well as the beds of bodies or water, are controlled by the Northwest Territories Land Act. However, not all roads, streets, paths, lanes, etc. are registered as Commissioner's lands, so it is not clear which Act controls them. Most roads are Commissioner's lands. In many situations, there will be an area of territorial land with a small strip or patch of Commissioner's land inside it. Likewise, lakes and rivers near communities are patches of territorial lands usually surrounded by Commissioner's land. As laws for Commissioner's land and territorial land are different, the laws con concerning the two seemingly identical parcels are also different. Ideally, the two acts would be combined into one, but for now it seems better to start by amending the two acts to be identical. First, we are clarifying the boundaries between Commissioner's land and territorial land. Roads and paths surrounded by Commissioner's land will be administrated by that act, while roads and paths surrounded by territorial land will now be under the Northwest Territories Land Act. This will also apply to beds of bodies of water. Secondly, the freedoms of the minister to make decisions about these public lands are currently different depending on which type of which act controls the particular parcel. For example, the Minister of Lands cannot currently authorize the sale of more than 160 acres of territorial lands to any one entity without permission from the Commissioner and Executive Council. Currently, there is no such regulation imposed on Commissioner's lands. It is one of the goals of harmonization to remove these discrepancies. In this example, the authority of the Minister to sell or lease both types of public land would be moved to the regulations. Another discrepancy is the fact that the Northwest Territories Land Act uses the Imperial System, while the Commissioner's Land Act uses metric. Not only is the Imperial System outdated, the use of the two systems is a difficulty from the point of view of administration. We are planning to convert the Imperial units of the Northwest Territories Land Act to the equivalent metric units. Some of the changes we have already made include harmonizing the lease rent rate for both acts, as well as setting an $840 bottom limit on the yearly rent. People renting public lands previously paying less than this amount now pay at least $840 per year, while people paying more will not notice any change. These proposed changes will make the administration of commissioners and territorial lands more straightforward, saving resources used in administering these different programs, as well as improving the quality of our laws. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Musi. Minister responsible for youth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as you can see from the young age of this cabinet, youth are our future. A territory with educated, healthy, productive youth is our goal. 
During the 18th Legislative Assembly, we are seeing more and more youth take part in our numerous programs available to them right here in the NWT. Some of those programs include Foxy, Smash, and Northern Youth Leadership. I would like to talk, highlight some of these successful programs. Let's start with Foxy, Mr. Speaker. Foxy stands for Fostering Open Expression Among Youth. This is a group out of Yellowknife that focuses on the mental and physical health of young women using traditional beading, theater, digital storytelling, photography, and music. Participants are encouraged to express their knowledge, opinions, and questions in, in a supportive and creative environment. Since January 2012, Foxy has reached over 3,000 youth in more than 35 NWT, Nunavut, and Yukon communities. Due to their success, they expanded and created a program called Strength, Mascul Masculinities, and Sexual Health, SMASH for short and it is designed to meet the unique demands of young men around the Northwest Territories. I took part in a Foxy retreat in the summer of 2017. It was my first leadership camp and it showed me how I could be a better leader. It also set me on a path that I am today and helped me take part in more leadership programs around Canada. Another successful program that is involved in positive activities is Northern Youth Leadership, which brings together youth from across the Northwest Territories for remote on the land camps in our spectacular territory. Their canoeing trips facilitate the development of leadership skills, inspire confidence, and help youth develop their inner and outer resources needed to overcome challenges, reach their full potential, and create positive change in their communities. The, de the Department of Municipal and Community Affairs sponsors a very successful Northern Youth Leadership Ambassador Program. This is a program for youth ages 16 to 24 that live in the NWT. The Youth Ambassador Program gives youth an opportunity to build leadership skills through participation at special events and volunteer assignments all over the world. Also, Mr. Speaker, in the NWT, we have recently hosted an extremely successful Arctic Winter Games in Fort Smith and Hay River. 2,000 athletes came from the NWT, Yukon, Alaska, Nunavut, <coughs> Greenland, or Northern Alberta, Nunavik, Sapmi, and Russia. These high-profile games celebrate sport, social exchange, exchange and culture, <laughs> and provide an opportunity for the developing athletes to compete in friendly competition while sharing cultural values from northern regions around the world. It is amazing, Mr. Speaker. Showing our youth that anything can be accomplished gives them the confidence to grow in the strong leaders that are needed in the future. Mr. Speaker, these large organized events aren't the only positive events for youth. Inubik recently had its first pride parade hosted by the Aurora Gay Straight Alliance. This is a group created by Beaufort Delta youth who care about fostering positive attitudes towards everyone in the community. There are also many youth opportunities in sport, with tournaments like Super Soccer that just wrapped up in Yellowknife and the up-and-coming track and field championships in Hay River. In Inuvik, I have started organizing movie nights to encourage youth to make positive choices for activities to take part in their spare time. Any youth can do this in their community. It is an inexpensive and great way to help youth in all communities around the North. Mr. Speaker, the government of the Northwest Territory is proud to support the wide variety of programming being offered to the youth. These innovative, northern-focused programs are helping youth overcome obstacles, reach new heights, and stay healthy. As I said earlier, Mr. Speaker, the youth are our future, and our future is looking pretty bright. Quinine, Mr. Speaker. Must see. Item 5, member statements. Item 5, member statements. This is time for members to make short statements on any matter. Uh, MLA, River North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would like to address the drug crisis taking place not only in Hay River, but all over the Northwest Territories. It has been an open secret among us for quite some time, and I'm sure it has brought and brought up time and again in this very chamber, but as I have seen, there is much talk about it, with little to no action to steal such word. Many, if not most, of these drug users are youth, which poses a unique threat. How are we, not only as a government or territory, but as a people, to continue if our generation is simply incapable of taking the torch of older generations? We have tried prevention through teaching those younger about the dangers of such substances. We have tried to prevent the sale of such substances, but clearly to no avail. If time was money, we would have been, ex we would have been spending our expenses most flagrantly. This is past the threshold of an easily fixable problem to one that will require the combined efforts of all the citizens of the Northwest Territories to overcome. With many becoming new addicts to illegal drugs monthly, and many more that are already addicted that would do anything, including thievery or murder, for one more high, 
I believe that it is time that we stop failing to protect our people from their own self-destructed behaviors. While the use of physical force to discourage the use of drugs may lead only to tyranny, and the bombardment of the same message over and over may lead only to annoyance, there have been many more probable solutions used in other communities worldwide. One of these is based on the belief that it takes a community to fix the issues of that community. To be specific, a plan tailored precisely for each community in the Northwest Territories. I believe that the root of the problems concerning drugs lies mainly in the minds of the people. After all, most people wouldn't use something they know is inherently harmful unless they had a legitimate wish to harm themselves in the process, even if the permanent physical damage came with the promise of a temporary high. While we have taken advantage of this fact in the past with our drug education programs, currently no amount of anti-drug advocates and messages of the horrors of what drugs can do to you is going to convince all youth to stay away from them. Now, my plan is to perform a mass psychoanalysis of each community, such as a survey or a non-judgmental interview of youth, possibly with incentive, to pinpoint the more common reasons as to why youth use drugs from those who have and haven't used drugs in the past within those communities. Then, after this information has been gathered, we can then enact a two-step plan. Verification within the community that they believe that this is the issue, then elimination of the root cause if possible, or, con or containment if not. Afterwards, we will then ensure that the positive state of the community can be sustained to ensure that the problem does not reprise in the future. While this plan may take long to complete and may not be finished in the foreseeable future, this plan has a very high chance to route illicit drug sales and discourage usage of unhealthy legalized substances such as tobacco and marijuana in our communities when carried out. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mati. MLA Mackenzie Delta. Must see, Mr. Speaker. Most of the youth I know are turning to drugs and alcohol because there are not enough youth programs throughout the communities in my riding. The programs we have had in the past were specifically made to prevent the youth from using drugs and alcohol are now shut down because the teachers or anyone else we had volunteer no longer commit. Students have tried to start programs again, but sadly it has not worked. No other organizations do anything about it either. The adults complain and expect the youth not to go down the wrong path, but nothing is ever done to try and prevent these actions. Every day I see younger kids trying to use these substances, and I believe we say the youth are the future. Is this really what we want our future to turn into? If we got more youth activities or sports in the evenings or weekends, less people would partake in using drugs or alcohol. Drug and alcohol free activities can hopefully put a stop to this. It only takes about two volunteers to watch over the youth if they open the school gym for us to play sports. One way we could combat the lack of programs and support for youth would be for the government to provide full funding for a full-time youth activity worker. This worker could have more organized sports or after-school programs and help educate youth on effects of drugs and alcohol. They do talk about drugs and alcohol in health class, but not enough to help the youth not do them. A prime example is they stopped funding the Don't Be a Butthead program, and that was a really well put together program on why you should not smoke cigarettes and the effects it has on your body. If they did this for other drugs and alcohol, it might discourage more and more youth to not do drugs and alcohol. Once again, drug and alcohol use among youth is a big issue that needs to be addressed. I'll see you, Mr. Speaker. Masi. MLA Satu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm the youth member representing the Sato and would like to voice my concern about education in the Northwest Territories. There are three main problems in the system today, low attendance, lack of diversified course options, and lim lim limited school supplies. In particular, in the Sato, attendance is very low. For example, at Chief Albert Wright School in Toledo, 101 students are registered, yet only half of those numbers attend. This is a disaster to me and the community. Unfortunately, this is not only happening in Toledo, but across the territories. Perhaps, Mr. Speaker, the issue of attendance is related to the lack of diversified course options in most schools. More courses are needed to make schools more interesting for the students. More options might improve attendances. Attendances might also be improved if more options might improve if more money was given to for school supplies geared to wider courses. For example, many career and technology 
technology studies courses can't be afforded because the schools don't have the necessary resources to offer them. In Toledo, our photographic course don't have the cameras required to properly complete the curriculum outcomes. More funding for specialized supplies would benefit the students' learning and possibly improve attendances. Mr. Speaker, I outline a few of the problems with education in the NWT, but I also outline some solutions. We could fix this. Thank you for your time. I hope the members here carefully consider some of my points. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Musty. MLA, Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm the Youth Parliament representative representing the constituency of Yellowknife North. I rise today to acknowledge a rather pungent issue we in Yellowknife North have been dealing with for quite some time. There's a rank aroma in Niven coming from the lake. Few residents know the cause of the smell because of the lack of information being passed from the Legislative Assembly and the city to the people of Yellowknife. There are multiple rumors circulating to explain the cause of the smell but multiple residents do not know the actual reason. In February, there was an investigation of all city sewage lift st stations that service the Niven Lake area. There were no leaks found passing between Frame Lake and Niven Lake. However, officials believe that there is an undiscovered leak that is adding the Frame Lake water to Niven Lake. There is growing concern from the residents of the area that there will be no resolution to the issue and that the smell will be expected to dissipate naturally. This may not be an adequate solution because it could take a very long time or may not work at all. Many homes have also, become, ha, have also begun to absorb the smell, especially in the Ballantyne Court cul-de-sac. If the unpleasant aroma spreads throughout the Niven area, the city could find themselves with a flood of complaints. It is better to nip this issue in the bud while it is still manageable. Not only is it unpleasant for the residents of Niven, but it could have an effect on the environment of Niven Lake. With the augmentation of the alien water integrating itself into Niven Lake, there could be changes in the environment. I am by no means a biologist or have any experience in, in assessing nature, but it seems logical that there would be some changes when a foreign substance is introduced. This would essentially affect the flora, fauna, and we, the people who live in the area. As I am a young person living in Yellowknife, I have no knowledge of whether this is being discussed by the MLAs or ministers, or whether there is any movement to correct the issue. What I hope for at this moment in time is that there is reassurance that the city is taking action to resolve the issue in a timely fashion. I also believe that trying to connect the residents of Niven to any information found is vital. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Masi. Emily Cam Lake. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je m'appelle Afrin Khan et je participe dans le programme du Parlement Jeunesse. Je représente comme membre pour Cam Lake. J'aimerais euh, parler à propos de l'événement qui a eu place durant le 26 au 27 avril 2018. Une compétition basée sur les métiers spécialisés et les technologies a eu lieu dans le multiplex ici à Yellowknife. Cette expo a permis des élèves de classe secondaire et d'après le secondaire de participer dans les plusieurs métiers spécialisés et les technologies comme la photographie, les arts graphiques, la charpenterie, etc. C'était le 20e anniversaire des compétences TNO Canada cette année-là et c'était l'expo meilleure de toutes les expos qu'on a eues. Le gymnase du département de la Défense nationale et l'aréna Shorty Brown du multiplex ont été utilisés pour accueillir les compétitions et les parrainers qui ont fait possible d'actualiser l'expo. Les parrainers incluent le Dominion Diamond Mines, l'éducation, culture et formation des TNO, le Collège Aurora, etc. La cuisine n'a pas pu être accueillie dans le multiplex cette année-là, mal malheureusement, mais l'équipe a planifié de la placer dans le bâtiment l'année prochaine. Monsieur le Président, les compétences TNO Canada est une opportunité excellente pour les jeunes et les adultes d'essayer les nombreux métiers pratiques. Ceci est important parce que dans la décennie prochaine, il y aura un gros manque de travailleurs dans les métiers spécialisés et les technologies. Par l'année 2020, la, le Canada va établir 218 000 métiers de technologie, mais il n'y aura aucune personne pour les remplir. 
C'est de notre responsabilité d'encourager et d'agrandir la curiosité de nos jeunes et de nos adultes vers ces métiers dans un monde qui avance vers les technologies, les commerces et le matérialisme. Nous pouvons prévenir ces manques de travailleurs dans les métiers spécialisés et les technologies dans le Nord par fortement soutenir les expos de compétences TNO Canada. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Afreen Khan, and I'm participating in the Youth Parliament program. I'm representing as member for Cam Lake. I would like to speak about the event that took place during the 26th to the 27th of April 2018. A territorial competition based on the skilled trades and technologies was held in the multiplex here in Yellowknife. This expo permitted secondary and post-secondary students to compete in various skilled trades careers, such as photography, graphic designing, carpentry, and so much more. It was the 20th anniversary of the NWT Skills Canada Expo, and it was the greatest and best out of all the expos held before. The Multiplex's Department of National Defense and its Shorty Brown Arena hosted the competitions and the many sponsors that made the expo possible. Some of the sponsors are the Dominion Diamond Mines, the NWT Education, Culture and Employment, the Aurora College, etc. The cooking and baking unfortunately couldn't be placed in the multiplex this year, but the team has planned to have it, have it in the building the following year. Mr. Speaker, the NWT Skills Canada is an excellent opportunity for youth and adults to try and experience the different hands-on trades. This is extremely important because in the next decade, there will be a large shortage of skills, skilled trades and technologies workers in Canada. By 2020, Canada will open 218,000 needed tech jobs, but there will be no one to fill them. It is our duty to encourage the passion and grow the curiosity of youth and adults towards these jobs in a world that is advancing to artificial intelligence, trades, and materialism by greatly supporting the NWT Skills Canada Expo to prevent these job shortages here in the North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Merci. MLA Tunede Willade. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I will be addressing why we need to change the name of the Northwest Territories. We need to change the name of the Northwest Territories because our current name is geographic, unrepresentative, and outdated. The Northwest Territories is a very long name. It contains over 22 letters and is even longer when spoken in French. Look at all the other territories and provinces in Canada. Their names are mostly all short and impactful, with the exception of Newfoundland and Labrador, which is a strange amalgamation of descriptive English and French together. Presently, the Northwest Territories has become reduced in English to NT. We have forgotten to include the West. Now we are the Northern Territories. Indeed, that is not sufficiently represent our, dis our beautiful region of Canada. And the name is a colonial rep remnant that does not reflect our current social demographics or inspire its residents in any way. Pourquoi nommer notre région géographique le territoire du Nord-Ouest? Le nom avait du sens il y a 200 ans. En juillet 1870, le territoire du Nord-Ouest a été créé par le gouvernement du Canada. Au cours des années, des parties du TNO ont été prises pour créer les territoires et provinces du Canada d'aujourd'hui. Le 1er avril 1999, le TNO a été divisé en deux territoires, la création de Nunavut. Le territoire du Nord-Ouest est devenu un nom qui s'écrit au pluriel, mais qui représente un territoire du Canada. C'est démodé. There was a proposal to change the name of the Northwest Territories. When Stephen Cackwee was Premier between the years 2000 and 2003, he suggested a name change. There was a vote. Unfortunately, the residents of the NT did not take the matter seriously, and the discussion became a joke about somebody named Bob. It has been more than 15 years since this has happened, which is longer than I have been alive. I hope that today there will be more thought and reflection about why we need to change our name. Mr. Speaker, Please look at the words in the Northwest Territories. They are simply very geographic. It is a name given by the Europeans during the colonization of Canada, more a destination and direction for voyageurs than anything else. It is not unique to the wilderness or the culture of here, this place where we live. Where is the indigenous representation? What is the meaning of the Northwest Territories? Is it simply a place in Canada located in the north and the west, but still east of the Yukon? Perhaps it is really more Northwest-ish than anything else. 
But most importantly, the culture aspect of our land and our lives is missing. In Inuktitut, the NWT are referenced as Nunutsiak, which means beautiful land. As Premier Kapwe had hoped we could change the name of the Northwest Territories to Denende, which means, as I understand it, the land of our people in Athabascan, or Cree. This is a name that has a meaning, a name that describes our history and the history of the people who came to live here. Along the lakes and the rivers of this beautiful land before anyone had ever considered it was north or perhaps west of someone else. Before anyone had dreamt of an antique name that we must now wear every day and, it, it, and is always colonial geographic reference to Ottawa, the center of Canada to some. Mr. Speaker, what would it look like in this assembly if all our writing names were simply based on geographic reference to something else? But I digress. Please do not get me wrong and misunderstand that I'm not proud to come from the Northwest Territories. Twice I have worn my Team NT uniform proudly at Arctic Winter Games, and I am contented to say that I am from the Northwest Territories. Quand je parle des Tiennons, je veux raconter ce qu'ils sont vraiment, pas seulement un nom démodé. Pour toutes ces raisons, je pense qu'on devrait changer le nom du territoire du Nord-Ouest pour décrire la réalité de ce joli et incroyable endroit. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Masi. Emily Nahende. Masi, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I've been living in Fort Simpson for 11 years, and I have experienced firsthand the effects of not having a permanent full-time dental professionals in my community and surrounding communities as well. This is a concern because long waiting lists are bound to happen, which prevents patients from receiving the proper care when they need it. For instance, we don't have a permanent dentist that lives in Fort Simpson. Some issues I have with this are not having regular checkups and not being educated on, the, on proper oral care. As well, they come once or twice a year. Most of the time, you're put on a waiting list without, oh, without regular dental staff. There's no consistency with procedures and ensuring patient follow-up. This, this is an important issue to me because I've seen the impact it has on my family. My grandfather was put on a waiting list for half a year. When he was able to book an appointment, he wasn't able to go because the ice road wasn't available for crossing at the time of his appointment. He was then put on a waiting list again. Due to the nature, due to the nature of the dental work he, he needed addressed, being on a waiting list was not helpful for him. He needed to see someone right away, so he made travel arrangements for him to get the care he needed in Grand Perry, Alberta. He was not able to go alone, so his wife needed to be his medical escort. Mr. Speaker, the situation my grandfather experienced shouldn't have happened. I would like to see the procedure for booking appointments changed and to have a dental team that is more consistent in my communities and surrounding communities. I believe that if the dental team visit the, visited the community in my region at least four times a year, it would help patients get the care they need and there wouldn't be a waiting list for patients. I feel it would be beneficial to the patients if their appointments were booked based on the urgency of their situation, especially when appointments are missed by no fault of the patient. Another point I like to make is that there needs that there needs to be more awareness and time taken when the medical staff are booking the appointments to ensure that the patient will be able to attend no matter what time of the year it is. I feel it is important that residents of these communities are given the opportunity to receive the dental care they need. Masi, Mr. Speaker. Masi. MLA Frame Lake. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hello, my name is India Edwards Lowen, and today I will be addressing the issue of youth in the Northwest Territories being not able to participate in sports because of their financial situation. I love to play sports. I am highly active in the sports community. Having the involvement of playing sports through my school and through other community organizations has affected me in so many positive ways that I wish everyone could experience. Unfortunately, many young Northern teams do not have the ability to play the sports they desire to play due to their financial position. Some youth can't afford to play because of their household situation, whether that be not being able to pay for equipment or not being able to attend the essential practices 
as a result of limited transportation access. Sports help kids in many more ways than one. Being a part of a sport, a sport helps kids grow and learn from their own successes and mistakes. Youth all across the Northwest Territories should have easy access, ability, and opportunity to play and compete in a variety of sports. Here in Yellowknife, only two weeks ago, the annual Territorial Super Soccer Tournament was held. Teams from across the North traveled to Yellowknife to play soccer for the praise title, or some even just for fun. Many communities and students planned on coming to the capital, but couldn't make it due to the cost and limited funding. Those teams who couldn't come to the tournament this year hoped to be able to make it, but couldn't make it by cause of not rounding up enough money. By saying this, I should recognize that this issue of not being able to play a sport because of the expenses isn't only an issue arising during this tournament, or even just this year. This is a prevalent topic in the Northwest Territories amongst youth. There are teams from all over the territory hoping to play in the, ter in the territorial tournament of their choosing. The farther north you travel, the more the travel expenses increase. Although, the farther you travel in any direction, the desire to play sport does not diminish. Playing sports in the Northwest Territories should not be unattainable because of the travel expenses. All players in the NWT in any sport should have the ability to compete. Territorial tournaments should be more accessible for all teams coming to play. A few years ago, I was playing with my school soccer team for the upcoming soccer tournament. We'd all grown as a team in a short period of time, and we were anxious for our first game to begin that evening. It was at that practice that one of my teammates announced she could not play the tournament due to the fact that she didn't have the required equipment because her family couldn't afford it. She was a key part of our team, but couldn't play with us because she couldn't afford the gear. This is a reality many kids face in the NWT. Some kids can't make it to practice or games because they don't have the accommodations. Sports is something that should be enjoyed by all, not only those who have no need to worry about how much the tournament fee is. The kids who can't afford to make it to practice should not be penalized for their home situation. They have the drive to, to play and they work hard, but are not given the chance. Youth in the NWT should have the ability to play the sports they wish to play. The reason behind why sports are so important to youth is because of all the skills you learn, the lessons you teach yourself, and the knowledge you gain will help you in many aspects of life. From team sports, you learn how to work together with other people. By playing an individual sport, you learn how to be independent and that you are responsible for yourself. Any and all sports have the athletes in a position to gain knowledge. There's always something to learn in sports. Being a part of a team or a sports club occupies kids so that they're out of trouble's way. The positive impact of joining a sport doesn't only affect the athlete, but also their family and fellow community members. Having sports be accessible to everyone will not only benefit the athletes, but those around them. My hope is for sports to become more affordable for youth in the North. Sports should be available to all youth because everyone in the territory can benefit from the positive outcomes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Musty. MLA Yall Knife Center. Musty, Mr. Speaker. My name is David John Draggies, and I'm a member of the Yall Knife's Denny's First Nation, and I am in the ninth grade at Sir John Franklin High School. I would like to speak about the mental health crisis facing young people today. We are in desperate need of an we are in desperate need of improvement of mental health care and service in the North. More specifically, shorter wait time and more professionals. The average numbers of youth, young people who die from suicide each year in the North is 10 times higher than the national average. Even one suicide is too many. There is lack of mental health resources in the North and what is available mostly found in the capital cities. What about the, our young people who live, what about our young people living in communities? The average wait time for service covered by mental health care is five to six months. The suicide rate of indigenous youth five to six times higher than the non-average indigenous youth. 
This issue needs immediate attention. Young people need to consult when it comes to issues that affect their own health. Must see, Mr. Speaker. Must see, MLA Decho. Must see, Mr. Speaker. It is my honor to inform regular members and Northern Youth on Kagi 2 Atlas, which began in June 2016. My name is Maverick Simba Kanin, and I'm the representative for the Daycho riding, and one of the issues my community faces is climate change. The Kagi 2 First Nation has always had a close relationship to the land, therefore we highly respect the land and depend on it for food and security. But over the past several years, the community residents and animals know the impacts of climate change on the land. One of the things that climate change is affecting is the permafrost. Permafrost is a piece of frozen rock and ground that keeps the methane under the ground. Without the permafrost, it releases the methane into the air and will enhance the greenhouse effect, which will release the gas into the atmosphere and will make the earth warmer than usual. Another example is that climate changing it also affects the animals. Due to the earth warming up, animals are moving out of their normal habitat, and this could harm the northern ecosystem. For example, deer, cougar, and coyotes are slowly making their way up north out of their normal habitat. And about a year ago, they even spotted two moose swimming in the Arctic Ocean near Polytech. Kagi 2 First Nation and Wolford Gloria University collaborated in Craig Project Kagi 2 Atlas which is a community-based primary project that enables community residents to gain more knowledge of the impacts of climate change on the land. The Kagitu Atlas project also studies fire, forest fires, mapping, and developments. In the 1940s, a fire forced community residents to evacuate an original settlement in Teklina. In 2014, one of the most severe forest fires here recorded in the Northeast Territories a fire burned so close to Kakiza that it had to be evacuated and almost burned down people's houses. When community residents go out on the land, they take pictures and bring them back to environmental coordinator Malene Simba. She looks at both pictures from past and present to see changes on the land and maps it in for Kagiti Atlas. I would like to thank Kagiti First Nation and Wolford Lori University for working together to create this project. To extend my appreciation, I would also like to thank Northwest Territories Cumulative Impacts Monitoring Program and Fledge for funding this project. For without their support, this project would not be possible. If all residents of the Northwest Territories help, we can improve the economy and improve the world. Residents in the Northwest Territories can help by being energy efficient, minimizing your waste such as garbage, and try not to use your car as much as possible while walking to your destination, destination, which could help the air in you as well. In closing, on behalf of Kakiza Lake, I would like to thank Kagi Two First Nation, Wilfrid Laurie University, Fledge, and Northwest Territories Cumulative Impacts Monitoring Program for continuing this important project. Masicho, Mr. Speaker. Masi. MLA Nunakput. Kuinak, Mr. Speaker. Parotit Atara Manuak. My member's statement is a concerning issue about my community. Jobs, employment rate, and skills training in Takjiak are very minimal for everyone. You know, either they are full of employees making it full and unavailable to people looking for jobs, or there are no jobs in general, because there are only three stores, one school, and most places you will need an education to get a job. Most adults never graduated from Aboriginal backgrounds because of Aboriginal backgrounds, like helping parents and nanics and addicts, hunting, fishing and shopping, and traditional practices. And that just doesn't help anything, just their parents. Now my solution to this problem is simple. Build more places of employment and 
volunteering options, stuff like restaurants, stores, places for uh, entertainment like theaters and sports conferences. But the problem is you don't have enough funding to build these structures. So I'd like to see more funding, fundings and support from the government and the members of the legislative assembly. I do not know a lot about politics, but hopefully I would like to see a change in my home community and hopefully the communities in the not but riding. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Must see. Item six, recognition of visitors in the gallery. Item six, recognition of visitors in the gallery. Members now can make a short introduction of people visiting in the gallery. Uh, Tabacha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. While they couldn't be in the gallery today, I would like to recognize my parents, Clarence Reimer and Alex Hook, who are in Fort Smith. They encouraged me to apply to the Youth Parliament program and supported me every step of the way. I'd also like to thank the MLAs who are paging for us today. It's, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Merci. Okay. Hey, River South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, thanks, Mr. Speaker. I would like to recognize my parents who are watching at their Facebook Live on home, at home. And I would also like to thank Wally Schumann for coming to see my minister statement. Even though he is not here now, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Must. Yell knife self. my parents, Dan and Kathy, who are sitting in the gallery now, because they were very supportive when I was applying for this program. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Merci. Novik Bootleg. Oh, I would, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to recognize my parents at home and my brother and sister and Ray, and that's it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Masi. Okay. Trinidad Willaday. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to recognize my family and my social studies teacher, who are currently in Fort Smith, for encouraging and supporting the youth parliament. Yell Knife North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to recognize my parents who couldn't come here today and my social studies teacher who encouraged me to join Youth Parliament. I'd also like to thank Mackenzie, Danielle, Katie, and Jen who are our chaperones for this event. Merci. Great slave. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank my parents, Anne and Kathy, who are here today, as well as uh, my cousins, Evelyn and Christine, who pushed me to come here, and my family, friends, Kate Sills and Barb Cameron. Thank you. Must see. Okay. Yell Knife Center. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to recognize my auntie that were here, and I would like to also recognize everyone that's in the gallery here today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Masi Cho. The Cho. I would like to thank my mom. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank my mom and my dad for encouraging me to come to the Youth Parliament and to help me get out of my conference zone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Masi.
Frame Lake. I'd like to recognize my dad who came to support me here today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Masi. Range Lake. Nice, my mom and my dad, who've been really supportive to me throughout this program, and they were not able to make it today. I would also like to thank Honorable Minister Caroline Cochrane for taking the time to help me out with my minister statement and give me lots of feedback about that. And I would also like to thank all of our um, MLA pages and chaperones today. Thank you. Masi. Anuvik Twin Lake. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to recognize my mom and my dad for helping me out and helping me apply for this program, even though they couldn't be here today. Mm, thank you. Masi. Mackenzie Delta. Masi, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to recognize my parents who made this possible and Jen, Katie, Danielle, and Michael. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Okay. Welcome. If we missed anyone in the gallery today, welcome to the chamber. I hope you are enjoying the proceedings. Okay. Okay. Item seven. Item seven, motions. Item, item seven, motions. If this was a regular seating of the Legislative Assembly, a motion would be introduced by a member by giving a notice of motions and 48 hours later, the member would move the notice of mo sorry, the motion because we are conducting our proceedings all in one day and we have done a away with notice of motion. This time of members to proceed and debate the motions. Usually the speaker presides over debate on a motion, but for our purpose today, it will be the clerks at the table. Thank you. We'll proceed with motions now. Member for Frame Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Drug and alcohol abuse among youth. Whereas the Northwest Territories has above average rates of drug and alcohol use and abuse by youth among Canadian provinces and territories, and whereas heavy use of drugs and alcohol have been demonstrated to contribute to irreversible harm in terms of mental and physical health outcomes. And whereas youth are especially vulnerable to the long-term effects of drug and alcohol use and abuse on brain function and development. And whereas the government of the Northwest earns millions of dollars annually from the sale of alcohol within the territory and is expected to earn additional revenue from the pending legalization of recreational cannabis. Now, therefore, I move, seconded by the Honorable Member of Inuvik Boot Lake, that Youth Parliament 2018 strongly recommends that the Department of Health and Social Services and the Department of Education, Culture and Employment work collaboratively, collaboratively to ensure that youth wellness and mental health professionals be made available to all youth throughout the territory. And further, that a portion of rev revenues from the sale of alcohol and cannabis be dedicated to developing and promoting educational materials on the risks of drug and alcohol use and abuse by youth. 
and that these materials become a component of the health curriculum delivered in all Northwest Territory schools. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion is in order. To the motion, the Honourable Member for Frame Lake. Alcohol and drug abuse in the Northwest Territories amongst youth is a serious problem. Alcohol and cannabis will be more available and more prevalent in the Northwest Territories. The youth of this generation is going to be surrounded by more of these drugs and need to be properly educated on the matter around them. This motion states that some of the revenue from the sales of alcohol and cannabis will be put into the educating of youth on the risks and negative side effects of misuse of drugs and alcohol. By teaching the kids in schools of the likely negative outcomes can waver and hopefully change their view on their intention of using drugs. This motion also states that health, that health professionals will be made available to youth. The waiting list to see a professional when they are looking for essential help is too long. Like my colleague, the Honourable Member for Yellowknife Centre said in his statement, suicide rates are 10 times higher in the NWT than the average of the rest of Canada. By the passing of this motion, more trained professionals will be able to help the youth in need. Many youth troubling with mental illnesses or struggles with things at home are turning to drugs and alcohol. Youth in the NWT need to see professionals before it's too late. Another reason why this motion should be passed is because, is because drugs nowadays are beginning to be laced with more dangerous drugs. Fentanyl is the big one showing up in almost anything. Youth can be expecting a simple joint and end up overdosing because it was laced with another potent drug. Youth now more than ever need to be informed of what they're getting themselves into. I'd like to encourage my colleagues' support in this motion to help the youth of the NWT find the help they need. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. To the motion, the Honourable Member for Anuvik Boot Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I second this motion because I would like to ensure that the wellness and mental, that wellness and mental health professionals be available to me and my peers in the future and to ensure the health and safety of all youth in the North. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Nuvik Boot Lake. To the motion, is there anyone who would like to speak? The member for Hay River South. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just like to mention how in Hay River, we face the war on drugs constantly. It has become integrated into our citizens' lives and affects the community on a daily basis. We see drug dealers starting as in grades six and seven, and young children as low as the age of five become exposed to drugs on the streets, in the parks, on their bus ride home, and even in our own homes. We are surrounded by this problem in the community of Hay River, which is why I wholeheartedly agree with this motion and strongly believe that youth deserve mental health professionals in their communities. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member Hay River South. To the motion, Member for Tabatcha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I really support this motion, and I recognize that drug, drug use and, uh, among youth is really a problem. I see it ev almost every day around my community, and I, I am hopeful that if this motion is passed, the results will definitely improve the situation. I'm looking forward to seeing programs uh, not unlike Foxy and Smash uh, uh, to I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing programs not unlike Foxy and Smash fostering knowledge among our youth and so they know to make the right choice. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Tabatcha. To the motion, the member for Tunaday Willaday. Mr. Chair, the statistics are prominent. Alcohol and drug abuse are a huge problem among youth in the North. In fact, more youth and teenagers in Canada drink than smoke. We need to respond to this issue. I agree with this motion because it provides solutions to the problems that we are facing. Mental health professionals and more available support will be beneficial. If we want things to improve, we have to give funding and materials that will help. If the government is willing to contribute money and funding, why shouldn't we accept? especially if there's a possibility for improvement with these problems. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member for Tunaday Willenay. 
Next, we have the member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to say that I agree wholeheartedly with everything my colleagues have been saying. I'd also like to add that we see uh, an abuse of drug and alcohol in a majority of Indigenous um, adolescents. This could possibly be attributed to the trauma gene that we see being passed on from survivors of residential school. And since it is the government who have caused the pain to these people, I believe that we should be helping them um, cope with it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife North. Next to the motion, we have the member for Great Slave. I appreciate that in some of the smaller communities, it's much more difficult to get help, especially with full-time professionals, medical professionals. So I do believe that we need to put some sort of plan in place to, to be able to accommodate them specifically. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Great Slave. Member for Hay River North. Drugs are bad. Drugs are profitable. Both of these statements are true, so why can't we defuse the bomb and tame the dragon? With the strategy outlined within this motion, we can turn the metaphorical Ouroboros of drug abuse on itself and extinguish its flame. I agree with the statement. Thank you, member for Hay River North. Do we have other members who wish to speak to this motion? We have the member for Range Lake. Yes, I do agree with everything my colleagues have said as well. And I think that this is an issue, especially among schools and teens who do go to school. And it's also an issue that is causing a lot of dropout rates and things like that. So we should have, I agree, putting a plan in place to stop all this drug abuse among teens. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Range Lake. To the motion, do we have other members who wish to speak to the motion? I know this is the first motion. I know this is the hardest motion to stand up and address. I also know that once you do, you're going to want to keep going. So do we have other members who wish to speak to this motion? Seeing no further members who wish to speak to this motion, we will return to the mover to conclude debate on this motion. The Honourable Member for Frame Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In this final statement, I'd like to recap some of the points that were said on the motion already. Drugs and alcohol affect all communities. Young kids are now being exposed to drugs. And the communities are in desperate need of health professionals. This motion will benefit all youth in the NWT. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Frame Lake. We will be conducting a recorded vote on this motion. All those in favor, please stand. Uh, the member for Frame Lake. Uh, the member for Center. Member for Daycho, the member for Nunakput, member for Inuvik Boot Lake, member for Range Lake, member for Great Slave, member for Yellowknife South, member for Inuvik Twin Lakes, member for Hay River South, member for Tabacha, member for Monfui, member for Hay River North, member for Mackenzie Delta, member for Satu. Member for Yellowknife North, the member for Cam Lake, the member for Tunaday Willaday, and the member for Nahende. All those opposed, please stand. The results of the motion are 19 in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried unanimously.
Before we proceed with our other motions, members, we will take a, a short recess, and folks uh, from the gallery are welcome to join you in the Great Hall for a, a brief reception now. We will resume shortly with our proceedings. Thank you.
Thank you. I'd like to call proceedings back to order. We are going to resume with debate on motions. Our second motion, uh, we will go to the member for Cam Lake. Okay. Improving Northwest Territories High School graduation rates. Whereas the Northwest Territories high school graduation rate has been consistently lower than the Canadian rate for many years, and whereas the high school graduation rate is significantly lower for Indigenous students than it is for non-Indigenous students, and whereas labour demands in the economy are changing and the demand for educated, highly skilled labour is increasing, and whereas high school dropouts are more likely to be unemployed, have poor health, live in poverty, be on public assistance, and be single parents. And whereas individuals who do not earn a high school diploma face many more problems later in life than people who graduate. And whereas specialized programming and extracurricular activities encourage students' attendance at school and foster a sense of community and well-being. Now, therefore, I move, seconded by the honor honorable member for Great Slave, that Youth Parliament 2018 strongly recommend that the Department of Education, Culture, and Employment engage all district education authorities and divisional education councils within the Northwest Territories to increase the availability of specialized programming and activities in the Northwest Territories schools. I support this motion. Increasing more programs, even if that would cost us more money, would definitely increase the grades and high school graduation rates. Firstly, I base my opinion on the fact that all specialized programming and extracurricular activities would be easily accessible for all students. They must all be affordable and they will all require a grade criteria of over 50%. Those who aren't able to achieve this minimum grade requirement are either not seeking to improve their grades or they don't have the accommodations to study. We cannot revoke or change the grade requirement for failing students because everyone should have a minimal amount of knowledge. If not, they would be considered um, a bit dumb in our society, which will bring miserableness in the future. And to fix grades, in the NWT, there are lower graduation rates, which link to the fact that students aren't taught from earlier ages to pass, or else they think that passing is easy and not relevant to life. So elementary and middle schools in the NWT should have admission tests to encourage students from early ages that they must pass. In larger provinces like Alberta, Quebec, Ontario, and are have the most recognized and successful students, and they all include admission tests from early grades. The admission tests and passing marks change the attitudes of students towards education and make them try harder in school. So adding more programs and activities in school will appeal to a larger number of students and will encourage them to attend schools. The students will try harder to keep their grades up in order to join or continue their preferred programs or extracurricular activities. These programs will allow them to understand their strengths and weaknesses. Students will find what they, what they are passionate about. They will pursue to improve their grades even more towards the things that they have passions for and their grades will exceed. This will improve their graduation rates. Thank you, Mr. S Chair. <laughs> Thank you to the Honorable Member for Cam Lake. To the motion, the seconder of the motion, the Honorable Member for Great Slave. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I agree with this motion wholeheartedly. In this day and age and economy, it is incredibly important that we openly support and empower all of our youth. We need to offer specialized programming and activities so that they may discover their passions and determine their career paths early in life. It's incredibly important that in this day and age, you make enough money to support your family, to support yourself. And the only way to truly do that is to make enough on your own to know what you can make in society. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Great Slave. To the motion, do we have members who would like to speak to this motion? The 
member for Anuvik Twin Lakes. Um, I believe that if we were to provide more after school activities for the communities all around the territory, that it would benefit us a lot, especially in Anuvik and the surrounding communities, because most of the time students don't really have anything to do after school or extracurricular activities. Thank you. Thank you, member for Anubic Twin Lakes. Next to the motion, the member for Tabatcha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, w I support this motion because I notice that whenever there's a program at my school that is interesting to a good part of the school population, they will all come there at, to congregate and enjoy themselves. And I notice that if people go there with their friends, they are more likely to stay around the school as opposed to going off to spend time with their friends elsewhere. It means that if it's over lunch, the lunch hour, they will all stay for lunch together to participate in this program as well as, as opposed to going off and buying slushies or whatever else it, they, they like to do in their lunch hour. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, member for Tabatcha. Next to the motion, we have the member for Tunaday Willaday. School attendance in the north is decreasing, and school programming for the most part of the Northwest Territories is limited. The school system has substantial amounts of registered students compared to those, who st to those students who actually regularly attend. How do we mend this issue? We find ways to interest new youth in our school curriculum. To many individuals, specialized programming and activities are considered more exciting because they provide a change. They're not part of an ordinary daily school schedule. Perhaps by providing more of these sorts of specialized programs and activities, we could spark the interest of those who do not regularly attend school. Something different, something in which to look forward to. When some level of excitement is involved, it makes it easier to persevere through a day. I'm in agreement. I am in agreement with this motion and support the request to, in to increase the availability of specialized programming and activities in the Northwest Territories. Thank you, Member for Tunaday Willaday. To the motion, the Member for Hay River South. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I agree with this motion and I agree with what all of my other colleagues are saying. And I know that in Hay River, there are some students who only stay in school because they want to participate in their shop class or in their foods class because it is what they enjoy. We also offer a mechanics class in Hay River and lots of bright students choose to only really focus in on their shop class and ignore their other subjects. But they have to continue to pass their other subjects in order to stay in shop class. So I believe the ex other extracurriculars and classes given in school would provide other students with different interests, um, further interest in school. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Hay River South. To the motion, the member for Frame Lake. This motion is for the purpose of improving graduation, graduation rates by keeping kids in school because they will be more interested in some new programs. I of course want more youth attending school and the graduation rates to increase, but I'm not totally convinced that making additional programs will bring those numbers up. I've seen schools in which they've created more courses and the attendance has improved for a short amount of time. Then the numbers start dropping again, and I'm not entirely sure that this is the proper solution. Schools are already trying this, and they haven't seen a steady incline, so I don't see how this is going to fix what I'm looking for. So I'm sorry to say that I disagree with this motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Frame Lake. Next, we have the member for Range Lake. So. I agree with this motion because youth go to school when they're motivated and if they don't go it's mostly most likely because they're bored with the programs that are already there or they have absolutely no motivation to go and sit in a class for a while and learn about something. 
So if this is truly the only way to fully help youth become all that they aspire to be, then I am completely for this motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Range Lake. The member for Hay River North. I agree with the intent of this motion, the execution less so. Zeal cannot feign the thirst for academia when we can only bribe, bribe children with gifts for so long and for a time it may even work. But they are almost never a driving factor for attendance for those students already so far gone as to regularly skip school. Even after such students graduate, what then? Most jobs requiring a secondary school degree will require even more learning. It is less about altering a statistic and more about encouraging youth to learn to love learning. I cannot agree with this motion the way it is currently written. Thank you, member for Hay River North. Do we have other members who wish to speak to this motion? Member for Great Slave. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This motion would allow children, youth, to become involved in programs that they feel very passionately about or that they are not so passionate about yet but could become very, very interested in. They are specialized programs, specialized activities. They would they would tender to people who feel left out in day-to-day -day classes, people who don't feel like they fit in properly. And that is a big issue with youth, which is why many of them drop out of school, because they feel like they don't, they don't fit in. They're not interested in any of the classes that are offered. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Great Slave. To the motion. I know a lot of you have already had the opportunity to speak once, and as we've discussed, people are allowed to come back a second time if they have more they wish to add. Give people a moment just in case. Is there anyone else who wishes to weigh in on this motion? Seeing no further interest in speaking to this motion, we'll return to the mover of the motion, the member for Cam Lake. Sorry, um, we'll go to the member for Tuna Day Willaday. Uh, Chair, I'd just like to say one more quick statement. Um, also, we've kind of discussed, well, my colleagues and I have discussed that this um, motion will benefit those who do not attend school regularly, but what about those who do attend school regularly? I understand that this motion is not directed to towards them, but it also may benefit them by giving them more diverse ideas for motion. Oh, sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Thank you, member for Tuna Day Willoughby. To the motion. Seeing no one, we will return to the, the mover of the motion to conclude debate, the member for Cam Lake. I, yeah, I do agree with this motion still, and I don't have much more to say. So, thank you, Mr. Thank you, member for Cam Lake. We will be conducting a recorded vote on this motion. All those in favor, please stand. The Honourable Member for Cam Lake. The Honourable Member for Tunaday Willoughby. The Honourable Member for Mahende. The Honourable Member for Yellowknife Centre. Uh, the Honourable Member for Inuvik Boot Lake, the Honourable Member for Range Lake, Honourable Member for Great Slave, Honourable Member for Yellowknife South, Honourable Member for Inuvik Twin Lakes, Honourable Member for Hay River South, the Honourable Member for Tabacha, the Honourable Member for Monfui, uh, the Honourable Member for Satu, and the Honourable Member for Yellowknife North.
All those opposed, please stand. Uh, the Honourable Member for Frame Lake. The Honourable Member for the Dacho. The Honourable Member for Hay River North. And the Honourable Member for Mackenzie Delta. Thank you. The results of the vote are 14 in favor and four opposed. The motion is carried. We will now move to our third and final motion of these proceedings. And we will go to the member for Mackenzie Delta. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Whereas the mining industry has long been the backbone of the Northwest Territories economy, providing high salary employment and supporting secondary industries within the territory. And whereas the mining sector provides millions of dollars in own source revenue to the government of the Northwest Territories, which is used to fund various programs and initiatives. And whereas the Northwest Territories mining industry has not fully recovered from 2007 to 2008 global financial crisis. And whereas all operating mines within the Northwest Territories are expected to end production over the next two decades. And whereas mineral exploration in the Northwest Territories has declined significantly over the past two decades. And whereas government of the Northwest Territories programs in support of the mining industry are often oversubscribed. And whereas the tourism sector has been growing steadily with generous support from the government of the Northwest Territories. Now, therefore, I move seconded by my honorable member from Fourth Frame Lake that Youth Parliament 2018 strongly recommended that the Department of Industry, Tourism and Investment decrease funding to the tourism sector and allocate that funding to increase support for the Northwest Territories mining industry. Thank you, member for Mackenzie Delta. The motion is in order. To the motion, the member for Mackenzie Delta. I agree with this motion because the Northwest Territory was built on mining and without it, how are we going to have money for tourism? The mining industry provides people with high salary jobs, which helps people build families. And with these jobs, it keeps less people off the streets, which looks very good. If we were to make cuts and spend less money on mining, a pretty big chunk of people will not have jobs because there would be no money for a salary. Proceeds from mining are often put back into the communities of the Northwest Territories by way of donation or sponsoring community events. And for that, we should be thankful for the generous donations and sponsors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, member for Mackenzie Delta. We'll now go to the seconder of the motion, the member for Frame Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am in support of this motion because mining is a huge part of the Northwest Territories. The territory was built around mining. We've been supported as a territory by the revenue of mining multiple resources such as gold, diamonds, and silver. So many families depend on their jobs at the mines. If we don't do something about mining now, mining will die in two decades. All of those jobs will be lost and families will be scrambling to find a new way of income. Mining also brings in so much revenue that goes towards other pro problems in the NWT that everyone can benefit from investing more in mining. I agree with this motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Frame Lake. To the motion, the Honorable Premier. Mr. Chair, after much discussion around the cabinet table this morning, 
I have agreed to allow Cabinet a free vote on motion 3-16 brackets 1, investing in mining. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Premier. To the motion, the member for Range Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I have some numbers here. Just wait. So each year, the government spends $14.5 approximately million dollars on tourism, whereas they spend around $15 million on mining. Now, for tourism, the government gets zero dollars in revenue, whereas mining brings back $43 million. So for those people who want to say, well, the money from tourism goes to the economy, well, so does the money for mining, and it brings $43 million to our government. So I propose taking money from tourism to put it into mining, which could almost double the amount of uh, revenue we're getting from mining, and it would also go to our economy as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Range Lake. Next, we have the member for Tabatcha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mining in the NWT is coming to a close. In 20 years, the last of our mines will close down, and since no new exploration is happening, there will be no new mines to replace them. If we do nothing, mining, our most profitable sector, will disappear. Tourism, on the other hand, is on the rise. It seems wise to draw some resources from a sector that is thriving to save a sector that needs a boost. I liken this to a blood transfusion where a non-harmful amount of blood is taken from the arm of a healthy person to help someone in need. Please keep in mind that while, while we invested almost equal amounts of money into both mining and tourism, as my honorable colleague from Range Lake said, uh, mining was the only one that made us money as a government. If we lose mining, we will have lost our most important source of income. Even if tourism becomes more profitable in the future, Term is, term, tourism is based on a fashion, what people want to see. If for some reason people no longer want to come explore our north, then our tourism will dwindle. Whereas as long as people are manufacturing, we will be able to find an economy for our mining products. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Tabatcha. Next, we have the member for Tunaday Willoughby. What do mines bring to the north? They bring money and repercussions. I cannot state that the mines here do not bring a lot of money to the north and the northern economy, economy, because they do. The mines create job opportunities and scholarship money. At the moment, the mining industry is a great asset to the Northwest Territories. However, only at this moment. We have to realize that these mines are not forever. In the decades to come, they will no longer exist. By investing more into these mines, we are investing into a grave. Putting more money than is already invested is like pouring water into a, into a bottle with a leak. When you are really thirsty, there will be no water left. The, the mines bring no certainty and security for the future. When the mines are shut down, these multi-billionaire companies will leave the north to look elsewhere. We may be on the right side now, but regarding the future, we will not be. We have to consider what the mines will leave. The North will be faced with many repercussions. Hundreds of people will lose their jobs, and then in turn will leave the North. That though, that can be foreseen, and will inevitably happen. It is the environment that we cannot foresee. Currently we are witnessing caribou herds dying out and pollution. It can only get worse in the years to come. We have to think about the future. What are we leaving the North with? This is also our future that we are considering. Before a mine in the Northwest Territories is built, they must agree to, after closing, a reclamation. That is a great initiative, but you cannot recreate an ecosystem, an ecosystem after a mine. The damage that the mines bring are, per, per, are per, permanent, and there is no way to completely clean up the land. No, our land. Not everybody will return to the North, but quite a few of us will. When we return, do we want to return to a place in constant debt, trying to repair environmental damage? We have the ability to decrease some of this possible damage to the Northwest Territory. We have the ability to decrease some of the possible damage the Northwest Territories will face. 
Tourism provides security and certainty. Investing money in tourism is and will bring more people to the north. Tourists interested in seeing the north is automatic money without major environmental impact. We should not take money out of this budget. We have to think about what is to come in order to make important decisions that could affect the environment. Mining is our past, the mines are our present, but mining is not our future. Therefore, I disagree with this motion because although the mines are presently helping the North and are very beneficial, I am considering the future, which for tourism has more opportunities and provides more reassurance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Tunaday Willaday. Next, we have the member for Anuvik Twin Lakes. Anuvik Twin Lakes. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Mr. Chair. Um, as my honorable colleague said, we don't know what's going to happen because a lot of chemicals have come up in the past, and like the arsenic in the water, we just don't really know what's going to happen if we put my, what, money into mining. Thank you. Thank you, member for Anuvik Twin Lakes. Member for Hay River South. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so first off, I would like to mention con mines. The con mines, you can hardly tell that there was a mine there. The, ec the ecosystem has been repaired and the reclamation was successful. And the tourism industry, their revenue was $140 million. Sure, that sounds like a lot of money, but compared to the revenue for mining, one billion, it is almost nothing. It is one-tenth the size of the revenue for mining. And also, I would like to mention, tourism fluctuates. Sure, we advertise tourism. Sure, we talk about it. Sure, everybody in, over in Asia, they love coming here. But what if one day the aurora is just not here? Because of global warming, because of climate change, something happens with the sun. It's, nature is very weird, and it's messing up right now. Um, also, the north isn't really that big. I mean, Yellowknife, sure, they have lots of tourists, but Hay River, we get 250, 300 a year. Inuvik, sure, their tourism is booming, but the smaller communities really don't get anything, maybe 50, 100 tourists per year. And so it's bringing a lot of money and a lot of the economy is growing in Yellowknife, but what's it doing for the Northwest Territories as a whole? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Hay River South. If the member for Range Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I would like to agree. And however, there is that plan to increase the funds and tourism's revenue is supposed to go up by 120%. That is still nothing compared to the $1 billion we're getting in revenue from mining. And the goal here is not to cut tourism off completely. Tourism will always be there because it's what people are interested in. If one day tourism stops, it won't be because of anything except for the sole purpose, uh, fact that people aren't interested anymore. And that does not make it a very secure thing to invest into rather than mining. It's not more secure because if people someday decide the Northern Lights are not as cool as they used to be, it's kind of a fad and they might not come anymore. And mining can also be our future as well because if we invest more into mining, it will keep going. But if we don't, it'll die and tourism will stay the same and it could actually die down, down the road. And maybe in 40 years from now, we'll be saying we should bring back mining to the territories and it would be a lot harder than just to cut a tiny portion out of tourism and put it towards mining. Nobody's to say we're cutting tourism completely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Range Lake. Next, we have the member for Yellowknife Centre. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I disagree because the giant mine that we had by DLO had a leakage, and there was a lot of coney over there back in the day, and that helped the Aboriginal people that lived there to eat. 
<clears throat> and also, my uncle has a tour camp just outside of Deda, and that, and that I support him with, with his touring. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife Center. The member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As my honorable colleagues brought up, Con Mines Reclamation was successful, but you know what wasn't? Giant Mine. During the 50 years that Giant Mine was in production, it produced uh, 237,000 tons of arsenic which went into the air and into the ground throughout Yellowknife. This has actually killed people in the Acacho area. And granted, mines are much better now about their cleanup and they are not allowed to abandon it. But if a mistake is made again, it could greatly impact the environment. It was also mentioned that tourism is not a uh, trustworthy investment for investors from down south. Mining at the moment is scaring off investors because of land claims. Land claims are not settled, therefore, if a area with minerals that can be mined is found, but it is on a unsettled claimed land, they cannot mine there. At the moment, it, uh, tourism is steadily on the rise. And as my colleague said, it, is, uh, it fluctuates, it's unknown. So if we cut out of it, it could fluctuate, but negatively. And 120% of 140 million is not nothing. That goes towards health, education, infrastructure. It goes towards Yellowknife. It is still revenue, even if it is less than mining. So I'd also like to know how much a little bit is. Is it 5% of tourism's revenue? Because that's approximately um, let's see, $700,000, th maybe more. I'll have to double check. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife North. Next, we have the member for Inuvik Boot Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Tourism helps our economy, helps our economy. The money goes back into the communities of the North. And with the money the government has, we can go back to the communities also to help clean up, keep their town clean, keep the people of the community happy. Also, uh, also the Northern Lights are, won't go missing or anything like that. <laughs> the the NWT, NWT tourism rates have been going up recently since we got the new Anubic Tuck Highway. It connects Canada from coast to coast to coast, and we were the last piece. And the Dempster's been around for as long as I could remember, and it's, Everyone's like, we still get tons of tourists on the Dempster wanting to just say, oh, I've driven the Dempster. It's, it's not just gonna like disappear or anything. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Anuvik Boot Lake. Member for Cam Lake. Um, I strongly disagree to this motion. I do not support the idea of decreasing funds from tourism um, and allocating those funds to increase support for Northwest mining industry. I do understand that mining has been the backbone of the Northwest Territory's economy, but this territory has changed and we no longer need to completely depend on it. That means that we definitely do not need to increase more funds for mining, especially from tourism. First of all, mining is absolutely toxic to the environment. So if we do like support um, mining with more funds, that means that there will be more mines um, to explore, I guess. Um, so the, ex the explosives used to exploit the resources from mines ruin the natural and unique beauty of the NWT, which is completely irreversible and could be used, um, and it could have been used for like tourism if we don't like explode them for mines. Um, next, it creates ecological problems like the destruction of habitat and the huge release releases of arsenic. So the destruction of habitats will be the cause of extirpation, maybe even extinction of the minimal numbers of biodiversity that we already have. Um, also, global warming, which is happening, this has already taken the lives of many polar bears, so we don't want mines to be causing that kind of stuff too. 
why must we have so much greed and so much intent on getting money um, so that we will like sacrifice our own like biodiversity here in Yellowknife and all of Northwest Territories for more products and sales and resources like gold and copper and diamonds. The releases of arsenic is toxic to everyone, so the giant mine are two, are, is one of the biggest culprits of arsenic release. Um, so increasing more mines indicate higher levels of arsenic release, which will, be, which will cause bigger problems than just not being able to drink water before. Um, it will start causing health problems to all humans and animals, um, and it could cause like known and possibly unknown problems. So killing us all with arsenic poisoning would ruin the goal of boosting the territorial economy because we would all be dead. Secondly, um, mining is temporary. So in 20 years, all the mines that we have currently will end. Um, so currently we are using the resources mining offers us, like gold, silver, copper, etc., and they're all val valued metals. But the thing is, if we continue to try to find new places to mine continuously in order to have abundances of the these metals, at some point um, we will end up mining every single um, mineable places in the world, and we will end up using all the resources the mine offered. Then what? We will have to find a solution to this anyway, so why not now? We cannot continuously leave, live on the search for money from, like, from resources from mining. And finally, mining is not as important as before. It doesn't have to be the backbone of, N of the NWT's development anymore. Yes, it was appropriate at the beginning for the development of the NWT, but Yellowknife is changing, the NWT is changing, and the NWT has so many other resources that can be used for tourism instead of mining. So we have such like unique um, places and like we have the glowing northern lights glow during fall and winter. We have the beautiful green trees. We have waterfalls and lakes. We have great big rocks and hills with many fish. Like, yeah. Um, and we have many caribous, oxen, ravens, and other birds, lynx, foxes, bears, all of these animals. So tourism, it would be a great success if we invested more in tourism than mining. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good. Thank you, member for Cam Lake. The member for Tunaday Willoughby. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mining is our past. However, we are living in the present. This is not about the past. This is about regarding our future and what investing in mining will mean. Once you crush a living flower, it takes a long time for the flower to regrow. The same term applies for the ecosystems affected by the mines. Um, a few of my colleagues have stated that the mining industry is making a lot of money. So why does it need any more if it is as? Tourism is not, and tourism is not an investment. It is not, this motion is not about taking money away, sorry. Tourism is not an investment. This is not about taking money away. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Tunaday Welladay. The member for Frame Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As my colleagues, the honorable member of Yellowknife Center and Yellowknife North stated, the arsenic issue was in the past and we have learned from our mistakes and are not going to make those mistakes again. There are new technologies and new equipment to prevent these issues from occurring again. As for the environmental concerns, we do have beautiful land, but what land will we have left if we can't afford to keep living here? I know it's far in the future, but why wait for something the NWT can benefit from when we can look and search for a long-term fix? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Frame Lake. The Honorable Premier. Chair. As the member for Yellowknife North pointed out, Giant Mine did release lots of arsenic. 
There is no doubt about that. But Giant Mind did not close under usual circumstances. And they did not know what we know today. They are now trying to set things right by cleaning it and doing all sorts of tests. And if we close, the mining is going downhill, even though it's making lots of money. If we do not try to save it, think of all the jobs that will be lost. Like hundreds of people will be laid off just because we decided not to invest a little bit more into mining because the tourism is not profitable for the Northwest Territories right now. But mining is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Premier. To the motion, the member for Satu. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would not be supporting this motion. I think funding for tourism should stay the same and not be relocated to mining because tourism is very popular in the north. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Satu. The member for Range Lake. Mr. Chair, so like many people said, uh, there are ecologists on mining sites at almost all times who, are, if there's any trace of arsenic found, we're not going to be like we were at the time of Giant Mine and start putting it in furnaces and letting it just go out into open air like we did many, many years ago when we were uneducated of what arsenic was or before we even knew this is bad for the environment. We had absolutely no knowledge of that, but now we do. Things are changing and everything is improving, including our mining situations. But if we let mining go down and absolutely nothing to fund it, it will die. And it most likely will be a very strong difficulty to bring back if we ever decide to, which we most likely will considering its great success. Although it, was, it is no longer the backbone and it does not need to currently keep being the backbone of the Northwest Territories, it is still one of the biggest funders. And if we keep funding this, it will continue to be. And as for tourism, mining does fund a small part of the tourism as well. It does not just send it the money we get from it right back to our government. No, we take that and fund a bit into tourism as well. So even tourism will be hurt if mining dies as well as job and financial security. And as for the lands and all the chemicals we're releasing into the air, we're not for the most part because of the ecologists who let us know exactly what we can't mine and we cannot mine in certain areas after they have found chemicals or anything. So that is why it is a really secure position right now and we should be funding it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Range Lake. Next, we have the member for De Cho. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I highly don't support this idea because in a few decades, mining would soon run out of minerals to dig up. So in my opinion, we should not detect money from tourism because tourism is a popular thing now. It will continue to be the popular thing in the future due to the northern lights that the Japanese love. So I think the funding for the tourism should not be deducted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for De Cho. Next, we have the member for Great Slave. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mining is not bad. It's not great, but I wouldn't say that it's awful. Um, tourism, tourism is a good source of revenue, not necessarily for the GNWT, but it is for the economy. It, it grows businesses and families, and even Katie Weaver, her family grew on tourism, grew on the fact that there is a department store with her name. So my point is that mining is not bad. It's not a bad source of revenue. It brings in money, but we don't necessarily have to cut tourism to save mining. And m saving mining doesn't necessarily mean giving more money to them because if it is such a success, I believe that they would find a way to save themselves without the help of cutting tourism. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Great Slave. Member for Nuvik Boot Lake. As my colleague of Yellowknife Nor <laughs> North said, the dry mine has left a major footprint on, our, on the 
ecosystem in that area. Uh, history has a tendency of repeating itself. And being the youth of the NWT, I would like to be able to go out on the land of my ancestors in the future. But that won't be, able to, that won't be possible if more minds ruin our beautiful territory. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member for Anuvik Boot Lake. Member for Tabatcha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The only reason that mining will die in the next 20 years would be if we choose not to support it. Paying, investing money in mining is not paying money into a grave, it is paying money to keep mining out of its grave. Currently, there is no prospecting for new mining sites, but I believe that if we encourage new companies to come and prospect, there is a very good chance that, that new mines will be established. We are sitting on a huge mineral deposit near the Slave Geological Province Access Corridor, easily accessible. If we, can, if we can attract new companies to establish mines there, we will have established a, a firm and dependable source of income for the next, for the future. Thank you, Mr. S Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member for Tabatcha. The Member for Yellowknife Centre. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As my fellow colleague said, my MLA Decho friend, said that mining will come to an end soon because there's no more minerals to like find. And what are you going to do? Take money out of tourism and like make mining stuff and put hide it back into the rocks and you guys can find it again for fun? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife Center. Next, we have the member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to clarify, first off, that I'm not against mining. I think it would be very beneficial for the future of the North, and they are making great advancements in ecological control. However, I do not agree that we should take money out of tourism. And also, um, Giant Mine is not in the past. It closed down in 2004 which really was not that long ago. And the taxpayers nowadays are still paying to freeze all the arsenic in the ground and to continuously clean it up. Um, second of all, um, like my honorable colleague said, there are no new mining prospects. And I would be interested in them using their own funding to fund the exploration and when they've actually found an area in which there are valuable minerals, then we could discuss cutting funding from tourism. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife North. Next, we have the member for Hay River South. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, I understand that you guys don't want to take money from tourism, but where are we going to take the money from? We're certainly not going to take it out of education. We're certainly not taking it from Health and Social Services or ENR. Where's the money going to come from? And I would also like to stay, state <laughs> that we don't get any money back from tourism. Zero dollars come to the government of the Northwest Territories. We are not getting money to support health and social services and education. We're just getting money for the economy, which is good. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing that we don't get any money back, but we're still not funding other programs, other projects, other incentives. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Hay River South. Member for Tunaday Willoughby. Mining has funding, 15.7 million to be exact. But mining will die in the north. It is a non renewable resource. Hundreds of people will lose their jobs and then in turn will leave the north, whether it be now or in the years to come. It is inevitable. 
At the moment, mining is thriving, so why take funding out of another sector, tourism, that is cur currently also doing well, when we can do nothing and have both and have two sectors thriving? Thank you. Thank you, Member Tunaday Welliday, Member for Range Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, as many people are saying that, it, it, it's true, it's inevitable. At one point, as some of my colleagues said, that we will have mined everything. Yes, but how many hundreds of years would that take? As many mines nowadays are still standing and they have been abandoned for a while, reclamation is still needs to happen to those mines. That's just saying how long a mine can last for. And if tourism is so much like, not necessarily saying better, but if you're saying that if we use the revenue we're getting back from mining, and rather than putting that into tourism and funding ourselves and trying to run off of that, that would still be cutting funding from tourism if we used mining revenue to fund ourselves. Like, you're still cutting money from tourism that way. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Range Lake. Member for Hay River North. Speaker. Oh, oh. okay, wait. wait. <laughs> no one is denying that mining is good. Uh, no one is denying that tourism is good. No one is denying that mining is profitable. I am denying that mining is something that can continue. This is, because, this is simply because we are spending so much in regards to mining, I would not be surprised if we too were rendered destitute along with, along with it. Right now, we are spending approximately one quarter of our money on mining alone. And as many eloquently po pointed out, mining makes one, one billion dollars, the most of any of our industries make. Yet almost all signs are pointing towards this number decreasing in the future. Right now, we may be spending one quarter. Give it a few years, we may spend one third. Give it a few decades, and we will be, going, we will be gouging our land and bankrupting ourselves, attempting to revive a dead corpse. We can go down this path, which is almost certainly signing our order for decimation at the, cost of un, un, at the cost of enriching the present, or we can choose to prepare for the future, choose to take the safe path, let nature take its course, and invest in something with increased chance of success. To reiterate, I will support mining to its end. I will support tourism to its end, but what I will not support is a subjugation of one of our most precious growing industries, and I will definitely not support the welcoming of our imminent downfall. That's a downfall. Down, down vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, member for Hay River North. The member for Nahende. Merci, Mr. Speaker. Um, I disagree with this motion. I want to invest in tourism. The tourism sector has been increasing over the years and has made the NWT a popular tourism destination. And I like to add that travelers. Uh, um, I like to add that travelers get to see the beauty of the NWT, and tourism is always changing, which would attract more travelers. Must see, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, member for Nahende. To the motion, the member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to clarify that I did not suggest mining would take their own revenue money to fund their exploration. Instead, they could use the 15.7 million that the government funds for them. Tourism only gets about 14.9, and that is also split between the parks. Um, in addition, um, if we bring up more people here, like the Asians you said, and not just the Japanese who like the Northern Lights, it could appeal to them for job opportunities. Did you know that Yellowknife's uh, biggest minority are Filipinos? So I believe that we should continue to invest in tourism because it also shows the world that Yellowknife is open for others and it's more than just a small little mining town. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife North. To the motion, the member for Great Slave. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Chair. Some of my colleagues have mentioned 
um, reclamation. So I would just like to tell you what that is. That is cleaning up a mine, and it is negotiated in the terms of the contract that the people who are creating the mines and funding them, that they sign with the government. So those terms, I just want to repeat, they are negotiable. So you can say, no, I don't want to clean this up, and the government will say, well, you have to clean this up, and it can go back and forth for a very long time. People can choose whether they want to clean stuff up or whether they don't. And even though most of the time it is a very good contract, it can also be poor. People don't necessarily have to clean up everything. They don't necessarily have to get rid of everything. So I would just like to say that since those terms are negotiable, we shouldn't rely on that as much as we should as tourism, which is something that we can endorse, something which doesn't necessarily disrupt ecosystems, disrupt our natural land, which the NWT is famous for. It doesn't disrupt our natural waters and the beauty of our territory. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Great Slave. To the motion, the member for Tabatcha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To bring up a couple more things. Tourism only really benefits three or four communities in the Northwest Territories, whereas employees from, from mines come from many more. And really, it's only three or four communities in the Northwest Territories that can handle many tourists um, safely for the communities. We also know where there are new deposits of minerals. We know exactly where they are, and we know how to get to them. They are easily accessible. If we can encourage more companies to come and mine there, then we are guaranteed revenue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Tabatcha. Do we have other members who wish to speak to the motion? The member for Hay River South. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, previously mentioned, we were saying that mines were affecting our communities and affecting where we go camping and where we want to be in the north and those rivers and stuff that we go in. But mines aren't built near communities. And you think about the mines northern, um, farther north, up above Yellowknife, they are flying community, like flying. And Dyavik Mines is basically its own community where people live in camps. And also previously mentioned, mining was thriving. Mining is not thriving. Mining is on the decline. Mining is dead in 20 years. Our biggest industry is going to die in 20 years. Where would that put the North? How do we stand on this as a government? What other industry are we going to build? We have mining and tourism. Sure, we have other things, but my minister statement was about the importance of economic diversity. We need to build up, build up smaller industries. Tourism is on the up, it's going up. But if we take a little bit, like 5% of their government funding and put it into mining, and it helps mining survive, it helps them get to maybe 30 years, 35 years into the future, then wouldn't that be a benefit? Wouldn't those hundreds of jobs saved help the government of the Northwest Territories. I myself come from a mining family. My dad would lose his job if the mines in the Northwest Territories were dead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Hay River South. To the motion, the member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to say that economic diversity and investing in smaller in, um, departments means keeping the funding for tourism. Because as many of my colleagues who are for mining, it is our main economic income. Tourism is the little guy. 
And if you want to support economic diversity and investing in smaller companies, then tourism is what you need to be supporting. And as I stated before, I'm not against mining. I'm just against taking it out of tourism. I suggest the people who are for mining find a different way to get their money. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife North. To the motion, the Honourable Premier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as my honourable colleague for Tabacha, member for Tabacha pointed out earlier, only three or four communities do benefit from uh, tourism, but there are 33 communities in the Northwest Territories, so that is a very low amount. Plus, as I said before, the government makes zero uh, income off of tourism, while the private private sector does make some income, and the Northwest Territories is famous for mining. That's what it is, it's diamonds and mining. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Premier. To the motion, the member for Great Slave. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would also like to point out that we shouldn't just take money from, from a sector that is vibrant and that is healthy and growing. We shouldn't take money from something that's doing very well to put it into something that's still making a profit, still making money. We should, we should think about taking profits from another sector that is either doing less making less profit or we should take money from a profit or from a sector that has more to give than tourism. Tourism is still growing. Tourism is still doing well, but if we take money from it, who knows what could happen? It could decrease instead of increasing. It wouldn't necessarily balance the fields. It could just disrupt them. It could it could cause more problems. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Great Slave. To the motion, the member for New Vic Boot Lake. Mr. Chair, uh, as my colleague said, as one of my colleagues said, uh, if tourism gives up some money, it might last in 10 years. Then what? Are we in, in 10 years, are we going to give them a little bit more money? And then 10, another 10 years, are we going to give them a little bit more money? And until like tourism just runs out of money. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Inuvik Boot Lake. To the motion, the member for Tabatcha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have to disagree with my, with my honorable colleague from Great Slave. We do have to, we do have to save tourism. We do have to save uh, mining, because otherwise there will be no money to invest in any other any other sectors. Remember that tourism does not bring us any income, and I don't think investing in tourism will bring us much, much more than what we are already getting, which is none. Whereas investing in mining will bring us hopefully lots. If we don't save mining, as I have previously said, we will lose one of our, one of our biggest sources of income. And then, where will we find the money to invest in tourism later on? or in other important things like health care. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Tabatcha. To the motion, the member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to say that although tourism is vibrant, I agree with my honorable colleague, Great Slave, that we should not cut it off. I'm not sure where mining will find its investment, but at the moment it is steady and bringing in income. Furthermore, I believe one of my colleagues who was for mining said that mining brought in a revenue of one billion and tourism brought in a revenue of 140 million. So I'm not sure why they keep saying it, keeps, it brings in zero. Um, in addition, the ICI is working on a five-year plan that began two years ago to expand tourism, 
and by 2021, tourism's income will have uh, increased to 207 million per year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member for Yellowknife North. To the motion, the Member for Frame Lake. Tourism is great, but can never be a main area of dependency like mining is. We need to keep on exploring for new resources and keep the mines expanding. No jobs lost, more jobs needed and filled. Bettering the economy and bettering all in the Northwest Territories. Tourism can't take the territory anywhere besides where it is. Mining will carry us, for all, will carry us all for many years. Tourism do, is doing absolutely just fine where it is, thriving even. So I do not believe that taking a small amount from tourism initially and putting it towards mining, which makes revenue that goes back into tourism, is such a bad thing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member for Frame Lake. To the motion, the Member for Tuna Day Willoughby. I have a question for my colleagues. Is this motion all about money and receiving revenue? Isn't it our job to look at the whole picture and not largely looking at which sector makes more? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member for Tuna Day Willoughby. To the motion, the member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd just like to reiterate what my honorable colleague from Frame Lake said by wondering who the mines are going to hire. Because in mining, there is a history of them bringing in experienced workers who have worked in previous mines from down south. This would not help the people of the North who need jobs. And in the opening statement made by the MLA for Mackenzie Delta, she stated that um, mining got jobs for Northerners and that it got people off the street, although that's not true because you have to have enough experience to work in a government position such as this. Also, who's to say tourism couldn't support us? I mean, are you saying that tourism does not support main capitals like Paris or Rome or Singapore or any other place in the world? If we work on expanding Yellowknife slowly and surely through infrastructure and maybe eventually through mining, we could support ourselves through tourism. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member for Yellowknife North. To the motion, the Member for Hay River South. Okay. Um, so mining, sure the mine companies do hire people from down south. That's not something that I'm extremely proud of because I do believe that mines should only hire northerners. But in the north, there's only a certain amount of people that do have the skills. But in the motion previously passed through, we mentioned that trades programs and different types of extracurriculars would be introduced into new schools. Therefore, we should have shop classes and different opportunities for children to be introduced into trades. Um, and therefore, we would have northerners being hired at the mines. May I also mention that the mining industry currently, in most of their contracts, has to hire a certain amount of, no certain percentage of northerners. It's in their contract. They don't break their contract without repercussions. And this has been agreed upon with the government of the Northwest Territories. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member for Hay River South. To the motion, the Member from Frame Lake. This money coming from tourism to mining could go into educating and training local Northerners. So to add to my honorable colleague from Yellowknife South, there is nothing stating that Northerners will not be hired in the future. There is lots to learn and lots to do um, in the mining industry. And if we don't have the chance and opportunity to do it, 
we are going to lose jobs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Frame Lake. To the motion, the member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to state that the North is working on increasing the interest of my, uh, p students who would like to work in the North. There is the SFA program that helps pay for schooling so that people could eventually come back and work off what they owe or just pay it back slowly in increments. There's also Skills Canada, which helps showcase multiple northern jobs to increase the interest of students. Um, but ensuring that northerners are hired is obviously something we'd have to ensure before we invest in mining. And furthermore, I'd like to say again that mining should find other investments. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife North. To the motion, the member for Mackenzie Delta. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As my colleague from Yellowknife North said, they don't hire people that don't have experience, but I myself do know people that have been hired and they don't have experience. And how are they expected to hire people if they didn't have experience? Like those people are gonna, the people that do have experience are gonna have to come to an end sometime soon. So they're eventually going to have to hire new people and train them for the upcoming years. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Mackenzie Delta. To the motion, the member for Range Lake. Saying that they understand that mining should be funded, but they don't want it pulled out of tourism. Well, why don't you make a list of the things you could pull it from? You're going to go through every single sector the government has a budget for, and you'll find that you cannot pull from absolutely anything else but tourism. Tourism just happens to be the only thing with a slight amount of flexibility where you could pull stuff from, and it would not have a major effect due to the fact that they have more than like seven private investors, and then you could take the money from that put it into mining because they would not be as hurt as if you pulled it from ENR, education, health and social services, or things that desperately need money. A second thing to the point of reclamation is that sure they can negotiate it for a long time and the mines will just be there, but one thing that the, uh, my colleague forgot to mention is that for as long as they keep negotiating it and not commence reclamation, well, there's something for them, they won't get their money. Their financial security is held by the government until the reclamation process is complete. So they can negotiate all they want about not wanting to clean up their messes that they made to the environment, but they won't get paid. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Range Lake. To the motion, the member for Daycho. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Like what my fellow colleagues said earlier, that if they don't take money from tourism, it would soon die out. But later on in the future, it will die sooner or later due to no more minerals to dig out of the mines. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member De Cho. To the motion, the member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to say, if this motion does not pass, it is not up for us to make a list of where it should come from. That is up for whoever made the motion to decide. If it does not pass, then it's up to the mines to figure out where they're going to get their money. They already received $15.7 million, and if that's not adequate enough, then maybe they have to start um, budgeting or finding out where their overhead is. And furthermore, tourism fluctuates. I believe it was the member from Hay River South who said that. And how are you supposed to know how it is going to affect the uh, income of tourism, whether we take away 5% or 15%? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife North. To the motion, the member for Anuvik Boot Lake. Um, the one topic that keeps coming up is everyone saying uh, we don't want to not, uh, we don't want to not Take, we don't want to take money out of tourism and put it into mining. And they're like, they're saying, where can we get money from? You could get money from investors or just, <laughs> or like use budget it better. Like, 
what my colleague said. I had, read, I had read to note, but she said it first. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Anuvik Boot Lake. To the motion, the member for Range Lake. Mr. Chair, when it comes to the issue of budgeting their money, and I know $15 million sounds like a lot, because it is, but when you look at an industry like mining, it really is not a matter of how they budgeted their money, but it's more a matter of how much money does mining need compared to tourism. Tourism revolves on the Northern Lights, so mainly in Yellowknife at least. There's like our lakes, our fish, our animals, our nature, but those are all things that you can't just take budget from to put into. The main budget for tourism goes into advertising, selling your territory. Does selling your territory need as much money as mining equipment to hire ecologists, miners, and everything? And even though tourism already has seven or more private funders, while mining does not have any, we could give them a bit of a startup boost. It does not have to be a permanent kind of shifting of budgets, but it could just be enough because tourism already has what they need, and they don't really need all of that to sell the province, while mining does need a lot more money than it looks like. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Range Lake. Do we have other members who wish to speak to the motion? The member for Tabatcha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I previously stated that there are only three or four communities in the Northwest Territories that can really, that really have any tourist op opportunities. I'd also like to say that really tourism can only grow so much. Our communities can only take in so many tourists at a time before they overfill and are run down. Mining, on the other hand, tends to happen away from the communities. Um, these new proposed mine sites are far away from any other communities. So we can expand those mine sites much more than we could ever expand tourism. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Tabatcha. To the motion, the member for Frame Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to reiterate that even if we do run out of minerals, and we will, what money are we gonna fall back on to live in the NWT? It is expensive to live here, seeing how far north we are but we're not going to abandon our homes because we want to. Those who agree with this motion are not trying to disregard the nature and the environment of the land we live on, but we are being realistic here. If mine does not continue, we cannot depend on the money from tourism. Where are we going to get the money from to live? Of course, there are different places we can scramble some money from, but we aren't going to survive at the same level as we are right now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Frame Lake. To the motion, the member for Yellowknife North. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd just like to say that it may be seen as realistic or as dramatic. There are other sources of income, but it may take a little while longer to find them. We've got 20 years until they fully run out. That's two decades. We can find another source for this, and many people here seem to think that we are completely against mining. We're not, because that would t be a huge blow to the NWT. We just can't take it away from tourism, or else we'll have no backup plan for if mining does fail. We have to invest in it now so that it will continuously be on the rise. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife North. To the motion, the member for Anuvik Boot Lake. Mr. Chair, as my colleague um, from Yellowknife North said, uh, or no, sorry, <laughs> people keep saying that it won't be possible to live in the North if mining doesn't continue. I would like to see the stats on that. If you could give me like a piece of information saying that, just let me know. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Anuvik Boot Lake. To the motion, the member for Tabatcha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If we don't do anything now, mining will die in 20 years. And once mining, once the last of the mines close, the companies interested in mining will forget about mining in the Northwest Territories and move on to somewhere else. It will become established somewhere else and really won't want to go anywhere else. 
Once that happens, it will be very much harder for us to try and attract those companies back to the Northwest Territories if in the future we decide that we need the money for mining. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Member for Tabacha. To the motion, the Member for Range Lake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So for those saying that if we cut funding from tourism and put it into mining, who's to say we'll have a positive or negative turnout? Well, that's the thing. We don't know. What do we know? Let's look at that. So we know mining will die in 20 years. We know that. Next thing we know, tourism is on the rise. We have those two things. And sure, if we cut a lot out of tourism, it could bring it downwards. But the point of tourism is not to put a whole bunch of money into it. It's what people like. So I don't know, many people say it's more secure than mining, but you guys ever heard of fidget spinners, for example? That was a fad. That's exactly what tourism is. Once people realize that's just the Northern Lights, I have, I've seen that before. Oh, my mom told me that wasn't that cool. My grandma said that wasn't that interesting. Eventually people are gonna be like, it's there. It'll always be there. I can go stop by anytime. But mining has 20 years. Sure, we can wait, we can wait it out, but the longer we wait, the worse the situation becomes. So why not take care of a problem that's right in front of you instead of looking for long-term solutions? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Range Lake. To the motion, the member for Yellowknife North. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you know another, um, uh, what's the word? Another fad, Tide Pods. It's a dangerous invest investment. That's what mining is. Just like eating Tide Pods, you cannot base it off a of stupid teenage fads. You have to consider what adults would do and what is best for the constituents of the NWT. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Yellowknife North. Um, I think our, our last member on this before we return to the mover to close will be the member for Tuna Day Well a Day. Member for Tuna Day Well a Day. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We are, you got, um, my colleagues are right. We do need to do something with mining, we need to take initiative. But there have been other efforts. This motion, this motion is just one of the multiple efforts that are being initiated to help mining. So we shouldn't take out tourism to fund this because there are other ways to help mining. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Tuna Day Welladay. We will now return to the mover to conclude debate on this motion, the member for Mackenzie Delta. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. As was mentioned by many of my colleagues, tourism is an important part of the economy. However, mining has and will continue to be vital to the economy of the Northwest Territories. Mining provides many jobs for Northern people, attracts people to move to the Northwest Territories, and the money coming from mining is often spent and kept in the North. These are just some of the reasons why I support decreasing funding to the tourism sector and investing it in the mining industry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, member for Mackenzie Delta. We will be conducting a recorded vote on this motion. All those in favor, please stand. All those in favor, please stand. Uh, the Honourable Member for Mackenzie Delta. The Honourable Member for Frame Lake. The Honourable Member for uh, Range Lake. The Honourable Member for Yellowknife South. The Honourable Member for Hay River South. The Honourable Member for Tabacha. Thank you. Um, we will proceed with the vote as it has been called. Um, thank you.
All those opposed to the motion, please stand. The Honourable Member for Satu, the Honourable Member for Yellowknife North, the Honourable Member for Tunaday Willaday, the Honourable Member for Nahende, Honourable Member for Yellowknife Centre, Honourable Member for the Daycho, Honourable Member for Nunakput, the Honourable Member for Inuvik Boot Lake, the Honourable Member for Great Slave, Honourable Member for Inuvik Twin Lakes, and the Honourable Member for Monthly. And the Honourable Member for Hay River North. Thank you. The results of the vote are six in favour and 12 opposed. The motion is defeated. And thank you to all the members here, and thank you for the debate here this afternoon. Things did get lively, and I think everyone had a good time. Um, at this point, we've concluded the motions, and I'd like to ask the speaker to take his chair again for a moment. Mr. Clerk, would you please find out if the Commissioner of the Northwest Territories, the Honorable Margaret Tom, is prepared to enter this chamber and close the, this youth parliament?
Please be seated. Masi kashu nahi wenta ka tutsene fa agwat eta asi kyota one masi nete. Thank you. It's an honor to see you all again. It's been a long day, and I'm sure that a lot has happened, and an uh, exciting debate has been going on. And um, thank you for uh, still being here. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Migwe, Madam Premier Downs, youth parliamentarians, ladies and gentlemen, visitors in the gallery. My name is Margaret Tom, and I am the Commissioner of the Northwest Territories. It is my distinct privilege and honor to be here today to help bring a close to your spirited deliberations. Before I close this, youth, this year's Youth Parliament, let me take a moment to acknowledge and recognize all the hard work and effort in this week's Youth Parliament by our young MLAs. You have considered real issues that affect Northerners, participated in debates, and learned the importance of Legislative Assembly of the Northwest Territories in all of our lives. I hope that you all have made new friends and learned more about life in different parts of our beautiful country, beautiful territory. I cannot stress enough that you are the future of the Northwest Territories, and it is apparent to me that it is a bright future indeed. On behalf of the people of the Northwest Territories, I would like to thank each of you for participating in the 2018 Youth Parliament. I offer my thanks to your teachers and parents for enabling you to have this opportunity and to experience this week some of the realities of our government. I wish each of you every success and happiness in your future lives. Maybe some of you will find that you have been bitten by the political bug. And we will see you again in this building in a few years as elected officials. I would particularly like to thank the staff of the Legislative Assembly for their hard work training you this week and the members of the 18th Legislative Assembly for their effort to make this year's Youth Parliament the great success we all hoped it would be. Now, as Commissioner of the Northwest Territories, I want to thank each and every one of you for a job well done. You should leave here today feeling very proud of yourselves. May the Creator bless you and your families as you return home to your communities. May your light shine bright on your chosen path as you continue with your education. Stay focused, stay strong, keep working hard to achieve your goals and find your purpose. Masicho. Thank you, Kuanani, Kuana, Mercy Buku.
Please be seated. Youth parliamentarians, I am very proud of each of, each of you as you spoke in the House today. As youth parliament participants, you are here. What well, you have made me feel confident in the in the in the future of our government here in the Northwest Territories. On a personal note, I am very proud of my late grandpa Joe Migwi. He did not speak English, only Dogrip, but he was a great role model. He was in politics for many, many years. Many people knew him, and he wanted the best for our people uh, of Manfui. People came to see him, talk about issues, and he wanted he would talk to others on their behalf and try to resolve issues in our community. He was a man. He was on many boards in the NWT, such as land claims, school boards, wildlife boards, and mining boards. He was involved, dedicated, and helped make change. He listened. He made things happen. He was a man of his word, and he was a well-respected elder and a positive role model. We, er we encourage our own L MLAs to do their job and go to their communities, talk to children, parents, elders, and see what they, what they can do. People voted, people voted for them, and they are here because of the people. Once again, I would like to thank the legislative members and staff that helped us this week. It's been a great week of learning, making new friends, and having fun. Congratulations to you all, and I wish you success in your future endeavor. Masi Cho for your time, and I am grateful to be here. Mr. Clerk, this, this house is adjourned until the next Youth Parliament 2019.